Chapter 26 Chapter 26 1970 World Dual Championship v. Chapter 26 1970 World Dual Championship v. A Continuation Rabin realizes that he is starting to lose and begins to devise a winning strategy. He realizes that he is already thinking of falling to the ground like this. He immediately uses the spell to accelerate his fall, at the moment that he almost hits with the floor uses. The spectators in the stands were anxious to see Rabin's fall at great speed towards the ground. They were astonished to see him disappear into the air a few millimeters from the ground, almost causing them a heart attack of such suspense, but some scream with excitement and spirits Rabin, 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 you could feel the excitement and support for his idol. Alfard on the other hand sees his opponent fall towards the ground and disappear. When he sees him disappear he tries to calculate where he could appear and immediately casts two simultaneous spells and, in that direction. When Rabin touches the ground, he sighs in relief, but immediately watches his opponent Alfard summon five large three-meter snakes with a spell and launch them at high speed with another spell. With a masterful approach he casts a six-spell combo, and... Each attack led by each of the serpents and the last attack was aimed at Alfard. Alfard sees the spell coming and immediately decides to give it his all. He casts two support spells and on himself, feeling his mind focused and his body empowered, he casts a powerful simultaneous combo of eight spells, and end with. Home, certainly a great move. Well, with this move. Alfard will win and with that momentum Rabin won't be able to stop him. I kept looking to see what else could happen. The crowd was able to see the powerful clash between Rabin's Expelliarmus spell and Alfard's Depulso spell, and that clash faded into thin air or dissipated into thin air, the audience ecstatic by what they had just observed screaming innovation. On the other hand, Rabin is not well. As he realized that a spell was approaching him, he immediately casts to defend himself, but realizes that it was a decoy and having no other options to support his defense, because when hitting the first spell you can observe eight sparkling jets coming and impacting on the translucent sphere, without the possibility of escaping, apply more magic to the translucent sphere and resist the damage when it arrives suddenly. The third spell Depulso that hits the sphere powerfully and relentlessly translucent. Frustrated, Rabin could only grit his teeth and apply more magic, hoping to resist the impact, however, his frustration is just beginning because he sees the fourth spell appear, it was another multi-shot but it was more powerful than the previous one. Because it had ten glowing jets, Rabin, somewhat exhausted, applied more magic to the translucent sphere, hoping to hold out and be able to attack. But his hope is shattered, when he observes that the Alfard combo was far from over, because when the impact on the translucent sphere ends, the fifth spell Depulso collides implacably on it, almost vanishing the translucent sphere, but Rabin applies it more magic because he knows the worst is yet to come as he can watch the sixth multi-shot spell come and hit with the translucent sphere, clenches his fists and teeth in frustration and supports. But the sphere breaks and dissipates, I have immediately a seventh spell Expelliarmus hits him and his wand shoots out of his hand and he immediately feels that everything slows down as he has just been hit eighth spell Immobulus. Crowd in the stands was in a euphoria in frenzy and madness as no one thought that Alfard would suddenly go insane and as if he was stimulated with steroids and casting such a powerful combination of spells. Poor Rabin could be seen moving in slow motion waiting for the inevitable. On the other hand, Alfard quickly observes his opponent moving his body in slow motion as if he was waiting for him to finish him off and immediately with a smile sure of his victory, he shoots the spell. Rabin watches the spell approaching and clenches his resin teeth tightly, feeling the impact on his body, he feels that everything turns black and he faints. 
Abba fourth when he watches Rabin fainting, he softens the ground where Rabin will fall and raises his hand says the winner of this duel Alfard Black. Just like that Rabin boy predicted, he was unprepared for the unpredictable and paid the price with his defeat. Even though I will say that you have a good mind. The crowd in the stands went wild and shouted the winner's name Alfad, 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 Alfad. You could also hear the screams and cries of the Rabin fans. Since he had proven to be a powerful and skilled magician and had earned everyone's recognition, but sadly there could only be one win and one loser. Our dear host Oman appears in the middle of the platform and shouting excitedly, he says in the name of Merlin, what kind of duel we have just seen, what skill, what distresses, what timeless and luck, Lady Victoria smiles at Alfard Black with the sweet victory. The crowd roared in frenzy at the announcer's comment, clearly the audience was very excited and ecstatic. Host Oman appears next to Alfard and asks Alfard how you feel about this victory. Alfard who was tired and was already feeling the weakening effects of the spell replied I'm a little tired, but I'm glad I won. Without giving any more room to ask, he leaves the platform, walking elegantly towards the exit and raises his fist in the air in victory and immediately the crowd in the stands turns euphoric innovations and shouts Alfard, 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 Alfard. He he, that Alfard boy will be weak for a couple of hours and I think by the next fight he will be weaker. Host Oman was dumbfounded, as he couldn't get much out of Alfard, because he responded quickly and left quickly. He sees Rabin's side, but he only sees his team helping him so that he recovers more quickly, he observes that he was awake, but they were healing him and giving him potions to counteract the effects of the spells he received, with a gossip smile it will be done quickly to Rabin. Host Oman Rabin how you feel about combat? Rabin who was swallowing potions after potions for his Medabruyas, healers and potion masters. He looks at Oman as if he is doing him a favor and immediately interrupts his treatment and replies I feel frustrated, I came to think for a moment that I had victory in my hands and out of nowhere Alfard went crazy and threw that damn combination of spells. I certainly trusted myself and paid the price, but I learned a lot from this duel and for next year I will be back to compete. Ha 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 you certainly paid the price with your defeat. If I wasn't moving you with a passion, all over the field without planning, I wouldn't have defeated you and you would have won. I keep watching. The audience in the stands roars in approval Rabin, Rabin, Rabin was clearly very excited. The host Oman laughs and says well friend, that's the magic of duels, since there will always be a loser and a winner, unfortunate in this duel you lost. Rabin with a smile and enthusiastic you are certainly right, that special magic was what made me fall in love with this sport, for some people we can be barbarous and uneducated, since we dedicate ourselves to martial magic with all our hearts, but I he is glad of the good changes our dueling community has undergone in recent years. As combat mags we are being recognized in many countries. Spectators in the stands roar in another cheer Rabin, Rabin, Rabin Rabin agreed with the words. Host Oman you are certainly right. After this, what will you do friend? Rabin with a smile replies I will try to teach my son martial magic so that he will follow in my footsteps and train to become stronger. To be continue. P.S. Information on spells used in the chapter. This spell helps you quickly fall to an object or a living being. The teleportation spell. This spell summons a snake. This spell throws a snake through the air towards the opponent. This removes snakes, it is the counter spell Serpent Sorcia. Focuses and clears the mind, it is also used to accelerate the thoughts and have. This spell takes the magic from around you to make you more powerful for a predetermined time, the effect is that it weakens you for a couple of hours. 
In short, this spell is a stimulant to make you stronger. It is a very powerful enchantment that moves objects and living beings away from the person who conjures it, sending them flying towards a specific target or place. The repulse enchantment repels anything that is pointed with the wand. This spell or spell fires several jets of sparks at once from the wand bit, depending on the caster's mastery. Disarm spell. The freezing charm is a spell that immobilizes living targets. A more detailed description is that it slows down the opponent's movements. The Stunning Enchantment This spell is quite simple, if you are hit by this spell you faint or are momentarily stunned. Comment Two comments Vote Chapter 27 Chapter 27 1970 World Dueling Championships 6 Chapter 27 1970 World Dueling Championships 6 A Continuation Rabin with a smile replies, I will try to teach my son martial magic so that he will follow in my footsteps and train to become stronger, and maybe bring my son to compete next year. It will certainly be a great family tradition and the audience will surely welcome young Patil says Oman. Thanks friend, Namast says Rabin. Rabin can be seen clasping his palms together and slightly bowing his head and back, clearly it was a form of farewell to the Indian. Our man imitates him Namast. Even the public dismisses him shouting Namast, you can see Rabin walking off the platform with his recovery team from Medabruyas, healers and potion masters. Clearly Rabin was sentenced because he already saw potions coming after potions by his recovery team who were concerned about their health. They are ready for more. Shouts a man excited. The crowd in the stands roar in a cheering cheer we're ready, we're ready. Our man says our next fighter is a very powerful lady and witch, champion of various magical competitions, it is my pleasure to introduce you to the Bulgarian dueling champion, Ekaterina Krumni Valkov. The crowd roars ovation as there were many Bulgarian fans in the audience Ekaterina, Ekaterina, Ekaterina. From the entrance of the participants, you can see walking a woman with white skin, young between 24 and 25 years old, with straight hair and black eyes, with beautiful facial features, with an strider look, serious, moody and angry wearing a beautiful dress Victorian turquoise with extravagant designs in silver, with loose and straight hair, he carries a fan in his hand and in the other hand he carries his wand. You could tell from her gait and etiquette that she was a lady of a noble house. I think this woman is the mother of Victor Crumb, that guy who participated in the Triwizard Tournament. Ekaterina, how do you feel? Says Oman. Ekaterina says coldly stop wasting time and announce my opponent so we can start. Ha ha ha, that's what you get for gossiping a man and that girl crumb don't like to waste time. I kept watching, not wanting to miss out on the fun, or rather poor a man's misfortune. A man stared at Ekaterina thinking of something. The audience in the stands was laughing and booing our beloved host a man. Ekaterina, as if her intuition was activated, asks with vigilance, You are thinking of something rude, right? Our man as if his life depended on it, he denies it and says of course not, I was only thinking about how to present your opponent, ha ha. The audience in the stands cried with laughter at our man's misfortune. Ekaterina coldly says you better because otherwise you could be affected by some unknown spell or enchantment. Our man has been sweating cold, as the woman in front of him was relentlessly vindictive and quickly says of course I didn't think of that. The audience was still laughing at how comical host our man looked. Ha 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 ha, this our man boy is regrettable, the only reason I don't get bored with these tournaments is because it makes me laugh to see him being so pathetic.
Our man quickly introduces the next participant, is a witch who is participating for the first time in the World Dueling Championship and give a strong welcome to the champion of Greece, Persephone Raptis, nicknamed the Witch in Red a loud applause. The crowd roared ovation the Witch in Red, the Witch in Red, the Witch in Red clearly the Witch in Red was someone famous in the world of dueling and had a great fanaticism especially witches. The nickname of the witch in red was it. They awarded because he always wore red. Oh then the red witch also appeared, certainly she is the only one who is in the fifth stage and could give me some challenge. I will have to see. At the entrance a tall woman walks proudly, with beautiful features, braided black hair, tanned skin, with a cocky look as if everyone were below her, from about 35 to 38 years old wearing a beautiful very traditional Greek cavei, for those who do not know what it is. It is a set that includes a red tunic, handwoven and placed on a kind of red shirt. A black belt and in her braided hair she wears one decorated with wild flowers. When he reaches the platform, he watches Ekaterina smile in a slightly sinister way. Ekaterina sees her smile and says you better give up your bad intentions, which Ha ha, so far I have not found an adversary worthy of mention, I came to the world competition because they told me that there is a smug magician and that he does not know the immensity of the skies and declares himself invincible says Persephone. Sorry for knowing no limits to my arrogance, but this brother is trying to make a legend around here. Ekaterina raises her fan up to her mouth so that they don't see her mocking smile, as she is caused by her opponent's ignorance and says well, if you win until the end, you will be able to observe it for yourself and know why they call it invincible. Although we generally always call he the tyrant, since it is the diminutive of he other nickname as a bounty hunter magician. Persephone realizes that her opponent is making fun of her thinking something like, this witch is request a good beating, and with a provocative smile oh she seems very informed and why don't you enlighten me? I'll tell you, but if you beat me says Ekaterina with a smile. Our man who was on the side, saying nothing since he did not want to be the target of these crazy witches, who seemed like they were going to kill themselves at any moment takes a little courage and says to witness this fight our dear referee Aberforth Dumbledore. Aberforth walks up to the half-platform between the two ladies and says I want an honourable and fair duel, you can only win the duel by stunning, wounding or your opponent surrendering and you cannot kill the opponent, it is understood. Ekaterina and Persephone answer yes. Both competitors present their wands, in keeping with the tradition of dueling. They turn around and walk the ten steps, then they turn and look into each other's eyes with great battle intent. When the bell rings the duel begins says Oman. Ting, ting. Both witches simultaneously cast the spell, both spells collide and then dissipate, however, Persephone shows her experience and casts the spell. Ekaterina sees the spell coming and counter-attacks with the audience in the stands watches with excitement and suspense, watching every move the two powerful witches make, as no one wants to blink and miss it. Again both spells collide and dissipate, Ekaterina casts a transfiguration spell and casts the spell, Persephone observes the flock of birds and the other spell hidden among the birds, showing her dueling experience quickly takes a small rock with his wand around him and throws it towards Ekaterina, but before he goes very far he adds the spell, the small rock becomes a monstrous and huge rock more than 10 meters high and wide. The audience in the stands is surprised by such a demonstration, since they had never seen anything like it before, and they immediately concentrate to see what Ekaterina will do. Ekaterina watches in amazement how simple Persephone cast a spell, as if to be continue. P.S. Information of spells used in the chapter. This spell is to enlarge an object or animal. The author's favorite, it is simple repel spell, attacks expels your opponent to the distance. 
Disarm spell. Summons a flock of birds to throw them towards the opponent, commonly used for pranks or to distract your opponent. Comment. Zero comment. Vote. Chapter 28, Chapter 28, 1970 World Duel Championship 7. Chapter 28, 1970 World Duel Championship 7. A continuation. Hello friends, it's me Max, here I am watching these two witches fighting, even though the battle is already decided and I focus on the battle. Ekaterina observes with amazement how simple Persephone cast a spell, as if it were the easiest in the world. The huge stone approaches, overwhelmed the birds and even the Depulse spell. She realizes that Persephone is a veteran of dueling. She has been reigning as champion in her country for several years. Ekaterina says I admit it, you are good and I will not give you victory so easily. She points with her wand she casts the spell and you can immediately see the huge rock shatter, and taking advantage of the dust, she casts the spell at her opponent. Persephone with a delighted smile casts the spell and immediately a thick mist can be observed that spreads all over the place and then she feels a spell coming and immediately uses, then it is said in whispers. You should give up my dear and it's because this witch, I already won this duel. Ekaterina, being able to see nothing through the fog, casts the spell and immediately felt that it was on her back, but out of nowhere she heard and in immediately feeling that her body he does not respond later, he feels his body tied with a rope and suddenly another rope arrives that secures it and a cage appears out of nowhere. Aberforth who was attentive, casts a finite spell and dispels the fog, and immediately Ekaterina can be seen immobile tied with rope and inside a cage, the winner is Persephone Raptis. Certainly that woman is quite good and maybe this year she will have an interesting match or two. Our man comes out of somewhere and says the witch in red has cattle. Crowd in the stands shouts in chorus the witch in red, 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 the witch in red. They were clearly excited and some spectators Bulgaria were sad that their favorite champion Nikita had failed to win. Persephone walks to Ekaterina and dispels the restrictions and says, Now why don't you tell me the information? The name by which he is known is Max the Tyrant Dragon, although the dueling community knows him as the Tyrant as he always wins tyrannically. Ekaterina says, Ha ha you flatter me, but I'm just another participant, I'll honestly have to send her a gift for her good words and I kept watching. Certainly, I have heard of that man from some wizard and witches. If it is him, then I will be very excited to face him says Persephone, though she thinks to herself. I was listening to the conversation of the two witches with interest, when I see our favorite gossip a man approaching Persephone and I could only roll my eyes, before. A man who was on the side without saying anything asks Persephone. How do you feel about this victory? Persephone who was deep in thought, is interrupted because someone asks her something and immediately looks into a man's eyes as if she was going to mutilate him into thousands of pieces, I feel excellent dear a man, it was no challenge for me and although I must admit, that young Ekaterina has a lot of potential, but she lacks a lot of experience in combat and that is the reason for my victory. Our man is excited that he can finally ask something, how did you like the world dueling championship? Interesting, because the person who had the brilliant idea to put and classify the duels by categories. It is magnificent, by doing so it gives the rookies the opportunity so they can move up the dueling pyramid and develop their skills, plus you make it easier for veterans like me to face stronger opponents. Persephone said cheerfully. Well thanks, I am considered brilliant in my ideas, but let's see what you really think. When probing her with Legilimensi I saw that she was thinking about, well certainly, 
there are several points that confuse me such as the huge numbers of galleons and the development of the dueling career as a profession, clearly there are more on this, but I can't understand it, Persephone thought, certainly the woman was thinking of interesting things. That's because the world champion invested all the galleons he earned to further develop the dueling master's profession says Oman cheerfully. Oh interesting says Persephone. From my place, I probed her with Ledger Limensi I saw that he was thinking of, he invested galleons so that the dual master profession and was accepted by the masses. Then little by little through fame, honor and glory changed the mentality of sheep, that various magical ministries put on magicians. What a wonder to develop such a strategy, thought Persephone. I could only laugh and say thank you. Ha 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 thank you and I kept watching and maybe I launched another legitimacy. Ha ha, yes it is, Mrs. Persephone and you have some words that you want to say to your fans all over the world says Oman. Oh well, I can say that perseverance and dedication every day makes you win. Also practice a spell a thousand times a day for a period of time and you will begin to understand yourself and your magic says Persephone with a smile. When probing her with Ledger Limensi I saw that she was thinking of, Juju, with this information, I will remove many innocent sheep from the path and they will turn into wolves, Persephone thought. I too thought she was very cunning and kept watching with interest. The crowd in the stands had people scoring like crazy in notebook. Although if you want to be a powerful wizard or a powerful dueling witch like me, it is quite simple and first you have to have many battles, second to learn everything you can and last and most importantly, it is to train your body so that you have better reflections that your opponent says with a smile Persephone. When I probed her with Ledger Limensi I saw that she was thinking of, Juju, I want to see the face of that old wizards, who always want to have the information for themselves and be the most powerful, Persephone thought. I was quite surprised by his thoughts, but I laughed at his thoughts and since I also want to piss off those old wizards. Ha ha ha. The audience in the stands scoring like crazy in their notebooks. They clearly treated that information as something precious and a clue to being more powerful. Our man had also jotted down what he just heard as he also wants to be powerful and says thank you for the words of wisdom Mrs. Persephone. You're welcome young wizard says Persephone and then looks at Ikata Aina who was being treated by her recovery team and says which Ikata Aina, thanks for the information and see you later, you should also exercise your body and your reflexes, because you are very limited for your body. Ikata Aina could observe Persephone walking and waving to her fans in the stands, you could clearly hear the cheering cheers from the crowd the witch in red, 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 the witch in red. Well, well, witches and wizards. Are you ready for more? Says Oman. The crowd screamed in a frenzy of excitement and expectation we are ready. We are ready, we are ready. To be continue. P.S. Spells used in the chapter. Hindering enchantment. This enchantment impedes the movement of its victim, temporarily paralyzing it. This spell summons a rope that ties the victim or prevents him from moving in a certain way. This spell summons thick ropes that shoot from the tip of the wand, tying tightly to its target. This transformation spell turns an object into a cage to capture its victim. This spell is a more powerful version of the smoke screen spell. Human presence revealing spell. This enchantment generates a large explosion, capable of collapsing a stone wall. It is a more powerful version of the explosive enchantment. Comment. Two comments. Vote. Chapter 29, Chapter 29, 1970 World Dual Championship IIX Chapter 29, 1970 World Dual Championship IIX A Continuation 
Hello friends, it's me Max. I am currently in a difficult situation and it is because while I am watching the duels, my four wives were reunited with Tatiana. One thing is for sure this brother will have some tough days to come. Watch the next duel that followed so you don't think about it. I hope you are ready, because I, your host Oman Valalignum, am ready to witness much more said Oman enthusiastically. Crowd in the stands cheers up at the host's comment and shouts in chorus we are ready, we are ready, we are ready. Our next participant, he is a vampire hunter magician and dueling champion in his country, from Transylvania Mr. Alistair Aldalka says a man with emotion. Oh he is the Van Helsing guy and I hope he has progressed otherwise they will defeat him. This guy thinks that killing vampires is the same as a duel and he's very wrong. From the entrance you can see a man coming out with a top hat, with a brown raincoat, with Victorian gothic clothing between black and brown, but the most significant highlight would be the necklace of fangs that he possessed. Elegant and intimidating in appearance, pale white skin, brown eyes, 1.76 cm tall, robust complexion, and aged 50 to 60 years. His facial features were average, although he had a thick beard that made it difficult to distinguish his face, but if you look noticeably you would realize that he has a leg prosthesis. The crowd was clearly intimidated by this vampire hunter, but no one knows who started cheering and it was because all of a sudden there was a cheer Alistair, Alistair, Alistair. Welcome to the World Championship duel in the master category, how do you feel about being here says Oman, clearly hiding his fear. I am very honored to be here and my goal for this championship is to win says Alistair confidently. Go how confident he is, well as I told you, he believes that dueling is the same as hunting vampires and he is honestly going to lose if he does not realize that. Our man says then I wish you the best of luck, because you will need it. The crowd in the stands was very excited, clearly they liked it when the participants were very arrogant. Our next participant, he is a leading man in the world of dueling and with over 13 years as Swedish dueling champion, please give a strong welcome to Mr. Elautirio Lindstrom says our man with enthusiasm. From the entrance you can see a man in typical Swedish costume. This consists of yellow shorts, knee length and a white shirt and a teal vest at the top. With dress shoes, white stockings and a beret that culminates the costume on his head. On the shirt, use a ribbon located in the shape of a bow. His appearance was an older man aged 65 to 70, sharp features, blonde hair, blue eyes fair skin, of a medium athletic completion. They looked very excited. Oh what a showy outfit, he looks like a very colorful and traditional individual. It seems strong perhaps from a good duel. Well I'll keep seeing it. Our man says how does it feel to be here in the championship? Well young man. I feel very good and I look forward to the duel with Mr. Alistair says E. Lauterio with emotion. The audience in the stands just needed a little spark to motivate themselves as they immediately roared in a frenzied wave of ovation duel, 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 duel. Now to witness this match our dear referee Aberforth Dumbledore says a man excited. Aberforth walks up to the middle platform between the two magicians and says I want an honorable and fair duel, you can only win the duel by stunning, wounding or your opponent surrendering and you cannot kill the opponent, understood. Alistair and E. Lauterio answer yes. Both competitors present their wands, in keeping with the tradition of dueling. They turn around and walk the ten steps. Then they turn and look into each other's eyes with great battle intent. When the bell rings, the duel starts says Oman. Ting, ting. Hearing the bell, both magicians point their wands at each other at inhuman speed, Alistair casts the spell while E. Lauterio casts the spell. You can watch the clash of both spells and dissipate, 
but both mags are only just getting started. Alistair casts the spell to test the waters, on the other side Elautirio casts two spells simultaneously and... From Alistair's view you could see the two spells collide and dissipate, but he noticed that from another spell and great speed he cast and immediately you can see the clash of the two spells and dissipate. I'm smiling, the truth is that it was an interesting start, but I saw that Elautirum was a little faster, although the difference is subtle and I kept observing the confrontation. Elautirio with a maniacal smile could observe the clash of both spells and dissipate. So he decides to raise his level a bit and casts on the spell and immediately a blast of fire can be observed. Alistair, watching the flames approach, knows that he must raise his level and so he decides to cast and immediately a large sphere of water can be seen colliding with the blast of flames. When they collide, an artificial mist is created by the steam, but Elautirio with a happy smile launches and immediately you can see a blast of fire twice the size of the previous one. Oh that old scoundrel, it is clear that nobody expected that and very well planned. I'll keep watching and see what else happens. Alistair with a sinister smile casts two successive spells and and immediately a large sphere of water twice the size above can be observed, followed by a blast of fire three times the size of a normal fire. I was thinking that this old vampire hunter looks like he has some tricks and I use them to get out of the situation. Elautirio and with a maniacal smile can observe how a water sphere collides with the flames but he can perceive something from behind the water with a lance smile. From a distance from the audience you could see the two old men throwing fire and water at each other, they were clearly crazy, but the audience was excited that this was the kind of match they liked to watch. Both spells collide and dissipate, but nothing can be seen through the vapor mist. Alistair, who has vast experience hunting vampires, smiles because this scenario gives him an advantage and immediately casts, and on the other side of the mist of steam, probing the thoughts with Legilimensi of Elautum, I saw that he was thinking of, surely this old man would think that he is the only one in the world who has faced a vampire, what an arrogant fool. Immediately feeling the magic around him with a smile, he casts three spells in the direction of the magic disturbance, and from within the mist of vapor he can hear three clashes of spells impact and dissipate, although nothing could be observed, if he could appreciate the colors of the spells colliding or impacting each other it was a very beautiful scene. When probing with Legilimensi I saw that Alistair was thinking, this old bat, he is starting to annoy me, he clearly wants me to use my magic to knock me down thinks Alistair and says old man I am going to attack with everything I hope he is ready. From the other side of the fog you can try, but this old man is not a vegetarian, so be prepared for my retaliation. Hearing their comments I laughed a bit, clearly these two were in their strategy. Alistair with a smile se. To be continue. P.S. Spells used in the chapter. Expulsion spell. It is also used to repel many spells by pointing it with the wand. Disarm spell. Harry Potter's favorite. Is a spell that invokes fire, when mastered it can invoke a powerful blast of fire. This is the advanced version of the fire spell and summons a powerful blast of fire twice the size of its basic version. This is the advanced and more powerful version of the fire spell that summons a large blast of fire. About 6 meters in diameter. Is a spell that summons water, when mastered it can summon a large sphere of water of 1 meter in diameter. This is the advanced version of the Aguamenti spell and summons a powerful water sphere twice the size of its basic version. This is the advanced and more powerful version of the Aguamenti spell, it creates a 6 meter diameter water sphere. Comment. 4 comments. Vote. Chapter 30, Chapter 30, World Duel Championship 1978. 
Chapter 30, World Dual Championship 1978 A Continuation Hi friends, it's me Max, I'm currently here observing the outcome of this duel. Alistair with a smile prepares to launch a successive combo that will lead him to victory and with three successive spells he casts them towards Elautum, and things got interesting. When probing with Legilimensi I saw that it was thought, this old man thinks, that I am not going to attack him, Elautirio thinks with a smiling face and while he watched the spells come. Elautirio prepares a combo to neutralize his opponent's spells and counter-attack. He concentrates and launches, and... From the public's point of view, the two old men could be observed calmly and meticulously attacking each other. Clearly these two old men were taking it easy. However, it could be observed that little by little the intensity with which the spells were cast increased. The audience was very excited to see the rivalry of the two old men increase. Alistair seeing his rival blatantly throw a bombardment at him. Deciding it's time to give it his all, he immediately launches a, and combo. With the clash of six powerful collisions, the spells could be seen impacting and dissipating, and by watching the last clash between Bombarda and Depulso duo. The impact between the two forces creates a repulsive force that clears the vapor mist in the area. So there you were old, I thought you had hidden from me says Alistair. Ha ha he's certainly an Alistair type, he has his way of bragging and irritating his opponent. I will continue to watch the duel. The crowd was excited shouting the names of their favorites Alistair, Alistair, Elautirio, Elautirio, Alistair. Elautirio, clearly they were excited by the duel. When probing with Legilimensi I saw that he was thinking about, this old man was making fun of me, I must give him an exemplary punishment, thinks Elautirio, but comments you know Alistair, you have angered this old man and get ready. And he throws her at Alistair. Oh I'm so scared. Alistair says sarcastically, while casting a depulse to neutralize his opponent's spell and says old fool, you're going to need more than, if you really want to defeat me. The crowd in the stands roared with excitement saying Elautirio Alistair, Elautirio Alistair clearly they were very excited about what more the two old men would do. You could see how the two spells were impacted and dispelled. But it could be seen that Elautirio was very angry at Alistair's comment. Elautirio angrily yells four spells in succession, which are, and, and secretly cast two non-verbal spells and. Jojo now if things got interesting old man Elautirum is setting him up like a scam and let's see if he can make this stew and win. Speaking of food, I'm hungry and I called Piram to get me something to eat. I suddenly remembered that I had a lot of lemon drops, which I bought and stored just to annoy old Albus. Ha 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 ha, don't blame me for bugging Albus. I kept watching the duel. When probing with Legilimensi I saw that he was thinking, oh shit, the old man went crazy, thinks Alistair and in a focus and concentrating he prepares to neutralize the spells of his rival. Launching, and... Immediately you can observe the impacts of the spells neutralizing and dissipating, when hitting the fire trier and aguamenti trier spells a thick mist of vapor is created, which spreads rapidly throughout the platform by the repulsive force of the impact of two fly pendo and depulso spells. But Alistair never thought that crafty old Elautirio was faking his anger and only to let his guard down. Since he felt something impact his body and immediately feels that his body is paralyzed and with focus he channels his magic into his body. Because he had learned this trick when hunting vampires, since vampires liked to paralyze their victims to draw blood. When he feels his body again, he realizes that he is being sucked by a whirlwind of earth into the subsoil. Imagine a swirl of sand that sucks you underground but instead of sand it is earth. Oh yeah, 
Old Elouturum has cooked this vampire hunter stew and it just needs to be seasoned with spices. Ha ha ha, I kept watching and launched a Legilimensi probe towards Alistair. When probing him with Legilimensi I saw that he was thinking about, oh shit, the crafty old man had it all planned, now I can only hold on, thinks Alistair and casts the spell enduring the suction of the earth whirlwind and going deeper into the stronger soil became the suction. Feeling that the translucent sphere could not withstand the drag, without options he decides to apply more magic to the translucent sphere in the hope of holding. Ha ha ha. I said so, the old Elouturum is simmering it. Elouturum when observing Alistair inside a translucent sphere sucked towards the ground and trying to hold. With a happy smile he laughs and says you shouldn't have made fun of this old man, now it's time to pay the price. And seriously he points his wand towards the whirlpool of earth and says. Oh old Eleutheus is raising the flames to his stew, I think he will soon be ready to serve and enjoy the sweet taste of victory. Mmm. -hmm. Not even I myself would have predicted this outcome. Earth Whirlwind as if feeling the stimulation of more magic begins to rotate with more intensity and force towards the subsoil. Poor Alistair is cursing Elouterio for his impudence, clearly he wanted him to drain his magic by protecting himself and then finish him off. When probing him with Legilimensi I saw what he was thinking of, come on Alistair, bear with it and think how he can get out of here, without breaking the Protego spell thinks Alistair, clearly looking for an alternative to leave and he came up with a silly idea, but if it worked he would come out unharmed and if he was unlucky he would drain a lot of magic. It was a better option than being hurt by the ground though as the translucent sphere would soon dissipate. I'm already starting to feel sorry for the man, old Elouterio is cooking poor old Alistair in that whirlwind and I can only think of several ways to get out but I am me and he is him. When probing him with Legilimensi I saw what he was thinking of, come on Alistair, you can do it, Alistair thought, trying to cheer himself up and says come on ah ah. Immediately he feels that he is rising upwards, but the powerful suction forcefully draws him downwards. In frustration he decides to drain all the magic he has left, and casts the improvised spell and as if it were being shot upwards at high speed, it quickly saw that it had left the earth whirlwind. But in a bad location since the spell loses its effect and leaving it suspended in the air about 7 meters above the ground. It was clearly perfectly visible and a great target. Oh my Merlin, it's a flying duck in motion and someone will have a rifle to shoot him. No one. Too bad I wanted a baked duck. The public when watching Alistair come out of the earth whirlwind shouts excitedly Alistair, Alistair, Alistair. Elouterio looks surprised at Alistair for having been able to get out of the earth whirlwind, but seeing him so helpless suspended in the air about 7 meters above the ground, he felt a little sorry for his opponent's bad luck. But only a little bit, because a smile of joy could quickly be seen on his face. When probing him with Legilimensi, I saw what he was thinking about, he he, I told you, he he, you shouldn't have made fun of this old man, Elouterio thinks with a smile and with his wand he points at his opponent, but without trusting himself and shoots three spells, and. Alistair in air was trying to think what to do when he felt that his body could not move. Clearly the old Elouterio was going to finish him off and trying to desire himself from the spell, but he did not count on the old man to be so cautious. Why did he feel his beloved wand being ripped from his hand and immediately felt another impact and noticed that everything is turning black and immediately passed out? Oh yes, the old Elouterio this in the house bitches. To be honest this duel was a bit of fun and I kept watching. Aberforth observing Alistair falling and passed out, and knowing that he had already lost, casts the spell to help him. 
gently levitating Alistair's body towards his recovery team. Since you could see that poor Alistair was full of dirt here and there, with some cuts and even his prosthetic leg was missing. The winner of this duel is Mr. Elalterio Lindstrom says Abba Forth seriously. When the host Oman appears in the middle of the platform and with emotion he shouts oh by Merlin, what a duel, give a ovation to Mr. Elalterio Lindstrom. Excited audience. To be continue. Comment. One comment. Vote. Chapter 31, Chapter 31, World Dueling Championship 1970X. Chapter 31, World Dueling Championship 1970X. A continuation. Hello friends, how are you doing? Here Max is your favorite protagonist and there is little left for me to start my turn. Some are impatient, but as the saying goes, the best is saved for last. Public of excited shout innovations and they said Elalterio, Elalterio, Elalterio. When probing him with legilimency I saw what he was thinking of. This old man with flashy clothes and with a happy smile, he was ruthless, thinks a man and with emotion he approached him Mr. Elalterio, how do you feel about winning? Ha ha, this old man, he feels very happy to have won Elalterio replied, clearly he was very excited to have won. Lord, how do you feel about the changes the grief community has undergone? Asks Oman. I knew this gossip boy is back. I can only hope the old man is brief and I kept watching. Oh this old man, think and believe that things are looking for the better. Since the profession of duelist is becoming accepted in the world and it is a pride and honor for me to say that I have never felt so much admiration for the wizards and witches of my own country Elalterio replied with emotion. How so sir? Could you explain a little more? Our man says trying to get the old man to explain a little more. You know that be duelists was a very poorly paid profession in my time. Since a wizard or witch uses duels to fix their differences or kill themselves Elalterio replied, but he also said duelists in many countries are not well received, since most people have the misconception that we are barbarians and that we only think about solving our problems through duels. It's true, I agree with his words and I kept seeing the old man speak. How could you overcome it, sir? Asks Oman. Over the years I was forced to work in many professions, but I always kept practicing my skills and competing whenever I could Elalterio responds. How was he forced to take other professions? Our man asked since many participants always evade the question. Well that's for, home, I'll tell you young man. How do you know how to be a duelist or a master in magical martial combat? In times of war we are well received in every place where there is a war and in times of peace we are seen as plagues and almost nobody wants to give us jobs Elalterio answered seriously but then said at least that was until the young Maximilian promoted the duels worldwide and made it one of the highest paid magical professions in the world. Oh you flatter me old man, flatter me, ha ha ha. I kept watching. How did you find out about the changes? Asked Oman. Oh this old man, he has three grandchildren who are my biggest fans and they told me about it, although I'll be honest my family never looked favorably on my efforts as a duelist. Since he always had very little money to live on and how sometimes I get injured in some duels Elalterio replied as if he were thinking about past events and says but the world changed suddenly for me or thanks to the young Maximilian, since at some point I could through the duels bring well-being and fortune to my family. Well, I hope you are still winning sir says Oman. Thank you young man. I hope so too says Elalterio as he fights and raises his hand in the direction of three young wizards who apparently were his grandchildren. However, 
the audience thought that he raised his hand in victory and roared innovation e lauterio, e lauterio, e lauterio. Public could observe that Alistair was being carried on a stretcher, clearly he was asleep from magical exhaustion or unconscious. They are ready to see another duel says a man trying to raise the ovation of the public. Oh yes, I am ready, as he watched every movement of the platform and the audience. Of course the public was already very excited. The next participant, is the new dueling champion of France and give a strong welcome to the beautiful Mrs. Apolline de Lacour says a man excited. From the entrance you could see a tall woman. Blonde hair, light skin, blue eyes and a pleasant and not demanding aura. With an attitude she what is wise and intelligent and is also very pretty as she appears to be half candle. She wore a simple vague dress from the period in purple, with her hair tied back. The excited audience shouted Apollin, Apollin, Apollin. A man who couldn't wait any longer appeared near her and asked her Miss Apollin. How do you feel about participating in the championship and being one of the 16 strongest participants in the world this year? When probing her with legilimency I saw what she was thinking of, with determination Apollin, you must show your skills to the coven, so that they allow you to have children and so they don't get more involved in my decisions, Apollin thinks and says in response with a smile I love I feel excellent to be here. Oh what lovely thoughts, her being the mother of the Triwizard champion Fleur de Lacour and I certainly hope she can achieve her goal, if she can't I will help her from the outside. I kept watching and listening. Great, I wish you good luck. Our man says trying to limit her conversation with this half candle. Thank you. Apollin says with a smile. The excited audience shouted Apollin. Apollin, Apollin. Now, our next participant from the United States, Mr. Jack Duke and Hammer says a man. What, that man also came, I thought he had retired and I think this time he came well trained. It is almost in the fifth magic stage. I will continue to see the fun. From the entrance of the participants, you can see a tall man of about 2.10 centimeters blonde hair and blue eyes, a dominant and authoritative tray. Robust and muscular build, aged 30 to 35 years. And he's dressed in a grey business suit, but without a tie and some buttons on his shirt unbuttoned and he looked very casual. Approaching and seeing his opponent, Jack says in a low, high-pitched voice oh for Merlin, an easy win. He's still so arrogant like when I met him and nothing changed. We'll see about that. Apollin says seriously. I will certainly agree with Jack this will be his victory, that guy is a tank and is very annoying to defeat. I kept watching. The crowd in the stands was booing him, clearly supporting their champion with all their hearts. Oh don't get me wrong sweetness. But I have traveled so far to fight Max and without offending you, but you still lack experience in this dueling thing says Jack confidently as he looked in my direction it was clear that it was a hint for me. Oh that we'll see. Says Apollin irritably. Ha ha ha, I see that you don't believe me and it's fine. As you are a beauty I will not be hard on you and let you attack me twenty times and I will not evade your attacks says Jack confidently and smiling. S-H-E-H-E, -E, she seems very confident, it seems that her turtle mode has evolved. Now to witness this match, our dear referee Aberforth Dumbledore says a man excitedly. Aberforth walks up to the half platform between the wizard and the witch and says I want an honorable and fair duel, you can only win the duel by stunning. Wounding or your opponent surrender and you cannot kill the opponent, of course. Apollin and Jack answer yes forward slash yes. Both competitors present their wands, in keeping with the tradition of dueling. They turn around and walk the ten steps, then they turn and look into each other's eyes with great battle intent. When the bell rings, the duel starts says Oman. 
Ting, ting. Jack says smile. Now you can attack me twenty times, beautiful. A translucent sphere could clearly be seen around Jack. The public did not expect that this crazy contestant would endure twenty attacks, just to please her champion French. Well, if that's what you want, then this lady will not be polite and will attack you with all her arsenal of spells says Apollin seriously, but when probing her with legilimency I saw what she was thinking of, this idiot, I don't know who it is believed it is, but I am going to attack it with all my power and let's see where its confidence goes. Go ahead sweetie, attack however you like or when you have feel ready says Jack confidently. Certainly this turtle guy. He's gotten more irritating over the years and I already want it to be my turn to crush him with. I will keep watching. Apollin could no longer tolerate Jack's arrogance and immediately points her wand at Jack and casts the spell. The spell hits the translucent sphere powerfully, but as if it were nothing, the translucent sphere remained without any fissures. Oh, that's how he reflects it and defends himself from spells. It's pretty interesting and it's a very cheeky stunt. I'll keep watching. Well, your first attack isn't bad at all, but you'll need a lot more power if you want to break my protego and beat me says Jack clearly he was doing it on purpose to annoy his opponent. Apollin fiercely and fiercely casts six spells in a row. To be continue. Comment. Two comments. Vote. Chapter 32, Chapter 32, 1970 12 World Dual Championship. Chapter 32, 1970 12 World Dual Championship. A continuation. Apollin fiercely and fiercely casts six spells in a row in the direction of Jack, and. And immediately you could see the spells successively impacting the translucent sphere but the translucent sphere seemed immovable and impenetrable. The crowd in the stands delighted to see something new shouted in a standing ovation Jack, 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 Jack. Well, oh for Merlin, what a scary witch, I'm almost afraid of you, but those spells still lack power says Jack with a smile, but you could see that he was taking it easy. Apollin was clear that the man in front of her did something with the translucent sphere and why, when it hit the spells they twisted, but she couldn't say what it was or how she managed to withstand the impact without breaking the translucent sphere. You are a magician specialized in defense, right asks Apollin clearly had heard rumors of people who only focused and specialized in a certain magical branch. But they did it with dedication and they were incredible in those branches of magic. Ah, uh, I am surprised that you know about me, the truth since Max defeated me and snatched the title of champion from me long ago and I have perfected my spells, to such a degree that it is almost impossible to dispel. Well at least I have not found anyone to dispel it for the moment replies Jack. Makes it sound. Like I've stolen the title of world dueling champion, what a jerk let it be my turn and I'll show you a world of pain. So that's why you kindly offered me 20 attacks asks Apollin. No, I did it because I wanted to give you the opportunity to demonstrate your power replies Jack honestly. You were he world dueling champion asked Apollin. Yes, T was, but by being defeated by Max. It opened a path of opportunity to improve myself in magic and spells replied Jack. Then, I can only attack and if at the end of the 20 attacks I cannot knock down your shield, I will surrender saying Apollin clearly there was no point in continuing if she couldn't knock down her opponent's spell. You can try, beautiful. Says Jack confidently. Apollin concentrates and points her wand at Jack and casts four spells in sequence, and the sound of the impacts was great, but Apollin could tell that the cursed Protego was still active, and immediately fired from his wand four reducing spells, and the public could watch Apollin's efforts, he was clearly giving it his all, but his rival Jack was in a different league. 
When observing that he was being distracted, he casts the auxiliary spell, feeling his mind clear of unnecessary thoughts, he prepares and points his wand towards Jack. You could noticeably observe the impact of the two powerful explosions, one larger than the other, but it was a failure because the Protego spell was still active. Apollin decides not to make a fool of herself and says with a sigh I give up. I wish you luck in your next duel when he said that, he left the platform. She clearly didn't want to stay and embarrass herself. Thank you, you are a very powerful witch, but you are not very versatile, you must train your spells more and add peculiar spells to your repertoire says Jack in a low and high voice, as if Apollin were giving him a hint. Jojo the bastard speaks like an expert and it is said by the man who only knew defensive spells. I will keep watching. Apollin stops, turns around, and watches Jack nodding his head. But she turns around and keeps walking. Soon she enters through the entrance of the participants and disappears from everyone's sight. Aberforth was a bit shocked by Jack's defensive spell because she did something that no one had ever done and that was to perfect the Protego spell to perfection. And it says the winner is Jack Duke and Hammer. Public in the stands was excited Jack, 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 Jack. Jack in the middle of the platform was delighted by the applause of the audience, he clearly missed the lively inhabitant and as a sign of approval he raised his fist in the air while laughing. Ha 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 that was super, I wonder what it will feel like and maybe I'll try. The crowd in the stands was in awe that their cheers were answered and so they became more intense in their cheers Jack, 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 Jack. Jack uses and leaves the platform, not giving our poor host a man a chance to ask anything, who was in a corner and quite astonished. In your face a man, ha 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 that passes for gossiper. Point of view of a unknown. Albus, are you sure that girl came to this epoch of time, with the time turner? Asked the stranger. Yes Scorpius, I'm sure and what I don't understand is why that girl has kidnapped James Albus replies. She said something about warning someone in this timeline of calamity, which we are going to face in the future says Scorpius. But who is he going to turn to at this epoch of time and there is only a few powerful magicians says Albus. In that you are wrong, my father told me that there is a very powerful pure blood wizard at this time and he was the one who built Heligdom the magical city says Scorpius. You know, that magical city is controlled by neutral magical families, and they do not allow entry to anyone they do not trust says Albus. In that you are wrong. The neutrals became so powerful it was because of that wizard and he is very hated in the British magic community, because he was the one who discredited Albus Dumbledore and after that he retired says Scorpius. I think you have more knowledge than I do when it comes to pure blood noble families and where we are by the way asks Albus. Albus, I think we're in France and I'm not sure since I don't see any magicians around here says Scorpius. Look, there's someone there, let's ask him Albus. Sure come on Scorpius. They approach a man who seems to be an error, he was clearly on guard duty and the question man increases his vigilance when he sees two young wizards approaching them who are you, identify yourself. Sorry sir we got lost and there was no one to ask for an address says Scorpius. Oh they must be here to go see the world dueling championship. Right says the era and tells him the address come that gigantic building over there, well there is the championship and they must go fast because if they don't hurry they will lose the championship. They are lucky and lucky guys, because I am already finished my watch and it would take about 30 minutes for another era to replace me. Thank you sir says Scorpius. Both young men are going to the direction of the tournament. To be continued in the next chapter. Comment. 5 comments. Vote. Chapter 33, Chapter 33, 
A Crack in the Timeline Chapter 33, A Crack in the Timeline A Continuation Hi guys, I'm Max your favorite fictional protagonist and I'm currently watching The Last Duel, oh yeah, my turn is coming. Host Oman says excitedly they're ready to watch the two remaining matches. Excited audience shouted we are ready. Host Oman says our next contestant is a lady, from Japan Miss Setsune Sagamura. From the entrance of the participants. A beautiful young Asian woman could be seen, of a height of 1.67 cm, of a slender figure, straight black hair, black eyes, beautiful features of a nation woman, of a playful attitude or aura. She was dressed in a beautiful traditional pink kimono printed with different colored flowers. Hello handsome, you should call my opponent. Setsune says in a flirtatious and playful tone. Poor man was a lonely single man, seeing that a beautiful girl flirt with him, of course he will answer of course beautiful and then if you want we can get to know each other better. S-H-E-H-E -E, that Oman guy doesn't change her ways, I kept watching the drama unfolding on the platform. A-R-A, A-R-A, Mr. Oman is hinting that I have a chance to marry you Setsune says in a flirtatious, seductive and playful tone. Of course beautiful, you have a lot of opportunity says Oman. Abba fourth observing that the host Oman and her duties were forgotten. He interrupts and says Oman. Announce the next competitor. Oh thank you Aberforth, I certainly won't forget to give you a bonus on your salary. I kept watching. Sure, I forgot, ha ha a man replies, clearly her face was a little embarrassed to be interrupted, but he says the next contestant is from China, loud applause to Miss Soong Mai Ling. From the entrance you could see a tall Asian woman of about 177 centimeters, with a slender figure, straight black hair with an imperial style bun, black eyes, beautiful Asian facial features, he wore a traditional sky blue hamfu, without any flashy ornaments. Approaching Myling says let's get started. Of course and now to witness this match. Our dear referee Aberforth Dumbledore says Oman excitedly. Aberforth walks up to the middle platform between the two witches and says I want an honorable and fair duel, you can only win the duel by stunning, wounding or your opponent surrendering and you cannot kill the opponent, it is understood. Setsune and Myling answer yes forward slash yes. Both competitors present their wands, in keeping with the tradition of dueling. They turn around and walk the ten steps, then they turn and look into each other's eyes with great battle intent. When the bell rings the duel begins says Oman. Ting, ting. While I was watching the duel from my private box and regretting that I had to wait my turn, something unexpected happened because I felt a crack in time, that only happens when some clumsy or idiot forcibly travels in time. Using my super incredible skills from the Magic Path Library, I was able to perceive three cracks in three different places of which one was in London, the other was in Diagon Alley specifically and the last one being the one perceiving, because it is so close from where I was. With nothing else to do to kill my boredom and curiosity, I set about investigating who was the clumsy that would open a crack near me. Placing two fingers on my forehead and closing one eye I used my personal spell towards the nearby time rift and I could see two young wizards entering the stadium with honesty I felt like I had seen them somewhere. But he didn't remember them. I use again towards London and I can observe a witch dragging a young wizard. It honestly looked like a romantic kidnapping scene as the witch was arguing about something and the wizard was yelling back at her. But there was something about the witch that made her very familiar to me, but I could guess. At some point the witch felt like she was being watched and cast a spell that almost broke the connection with my spell. The strange thing and the most remarkable thing is that he looked in my direction with a nostalgic smile. Another peculiar thing is that the spell I cast was created by me. 
a second later I felt that the witch uses the spell to connect her mind with mine, something similar to telepathy, but because of the long distance she could not do it and she lacks magic. I think she will come to France as she was watching with her eyes in my direction. I think I know who it is, but it's better to confirm later. Placing my two fingers on my forehead again and closing one eye and using my spell towards the time crack in Diagon Alley, when observing I could see two wizards older than 30 to 40 years and a witch of 30 to 40 years, but I knew this trio and well it's better not to get involved in this shit. But just as I said those words, I felt another crack in time, but this one was something different and in a nutshell it was sinister and evil. Observing with, me puzzled was that he was a man who did not look human. Concentrating, I teleport to the place behind the man and launch a powerful and modified, the man in question falls to the ground like lead and throws another at him. Just in case he was pretending to be passed out, since in magic you can never be entirely sure and it's better to be safe than to make a rookie mistake. With telekinesis I strip the man of all his objects, when inspecting the objects, I realized that I had never seen anything like it and well with curiosity I use for the first time the touch of the magic library on the man's boots and something comes out. Unknown boots. Range. Running speed attributes 13%. Balance attribute 5%. Item note, of unknown origin. A demonic aura is felt on the item. Clearly someone, wanted to interrupt my tranquility, but as I am going to allow that to happen, I throw at the poor devil man one of the most useful magic in the world Harry Potter, since with this magic there is no impossible interrogation. And I immediately see his memories and every dirty secret he has. And it turns out that I discovered that the bastard Albus Dumbledore was bored and decided to study a passage to another dimension or another plane. This dimension was a demonic one and Albus without exploring anything, I seal the crack. The problem is that with old time Albus died and the crack seal began to open. The demons began to invade the magical world and the trio of Naive as leaders of the light were decimated but they gained some air and thanks to the neutral families took action on the matter. I think I should meet up with the Golden Trio and see what the fuck I'm getting into, I don't want to sound prejudiced about everyone's favorite Golden Trio, but they had so much potential, that it just got wasted and is painful to see in the movie. So I teleport where the witch and the kidnapped boy were, I must know all the circumstances. When I arrive I see that you are arguing. Silly, you think my grandfather is useless like your father, my grandfather is the most powerful wizard in history and the fact that you don't know him, you mean that you are a low class wizard says the witch in a mocking tone. That, how dare you insult my father, he was the boy who lived and the one who defeated the dark lord Voldemort says the young wizard. You know silly, I love you but in this we have different points of view and I am more powerful than you says the witch. What a couple of interesting young people, then you must have being my granddaughter. Since I feel the smell of a dovaki in in you I tell them to get their attention. Who you are? The young wizard says surprised. Grandpa says the witch excitedly and jumps hugging me excitedly. What, is he your grandfather? Asks the young man. We'll continue in the next chapter. Comment. 27 comments. Vote. Chapter 34, Chapter 34, A Crack in the Timeline 2. Chapter 34, A Crack in the Timeline 2. A Continuation. Point of View Maximum. Hello friends. It's me Max and as you know in the previous chapter some clumsy and idiots traveled in time. I will just tell you that I currently have in front of my supposed granddaughter and honestly I don't like it at all, that my granddaughter have is romantically involved with a potter. But I have to see everything from various perspectives and angles, 
to give my opinion. Well that's me, so why did they come from the future? I say asking, but I was thinking, the boy is average, he is barely approaching the second magic stage and the witch who claims to be my granddaughter, is a different story is almost close to the third magic stage. You must help us, Grandpa. Says the excited witch the demons invaded us and nobody knows who did it or how it happened. Well, I captured and kindly interrogated this gentleman here. From his answers he more or less told me that a wizard named Albus Dumbledore opened the doors to paradise and now they like this world I say that as I throw the man to the ground. Poor demon. What? You captured him alive and is General Sarkin says the young wizard incredulously. He he, I told you. My grandfather is the most powerful wizard in the world says the smug witch. Okay, enough arguing, do you guys know this demon Sarkin? I mean, but inside I was thinking, what the fuck, this weak boy was a general and how low have current witches and wizards fallen? If this is a general and he is very infamous he has killed many wizards and witches says the young wizard. Grandpa do not pout, the truth is we are not weak and what happened was that these guys infiltrated the magical community and stole a lot of knowledge and resources says the witch clearly did not want me to judge her. I know you girl are powerful, in about six months you could break into the third magic stage I say, but I think. But the problem is that you are my descendant and it is obvious that there is a very big gap with other magicians. Grandpa says that, but I know you think that we are weak and incompetent and I don't want you to have a bad opinion of James says the witch. Okay, I admit, I was thinking exactly that and by the way. What's your name my granddaughter? I say and think, I already have a bad opinion that boy is a potter. You named me the day I was born, Iris Morrigan Dovaki in in honor and respect of my ancestors Iris says proudly and clearly loved the name I gave her. Oh Iris, a beautiful name I say and continue now can you explain to me, how these demonic types stole the resources and knowledge from the magicians and wait we are not alone saying that abruptly and disappearing from the sight of the young people. As I teleported behind the intruders. I glanced at the golden trio that was looking for someone, I immediately threw three at them and three bodies fell to the ground like lead. Like I always say, the precautions of being cautious in life, helps you live longer and also in magic, there you have to be cautious in every step you take. I think I will teach my descendants my philosophy of, top off to be safe. I fire a second round of these mayas at the bodies and with telekinesis I strip them of their wands and magic items. I levitated all three bodies and walked towards a James and an Iris, incredulous and surprised. Impossible. You defeated my aunt and my father, also my uncle, but it's okay since he always gets hurt and defeated. But they were defeated as if they were nothing and they are the strongest magicians of light asked a James. Oh it was your father. He is certainly a peculiar magician, he is in the low fourth magic stage and very close to reaching medium level. You should be proud you have so powerful. What, you're making fun of me and my dad is the leader of the light says James. Boy, I hope that in the future you will change your attitude a bit and the fact that you have not seen something or someone not do something, does not mean that it does not exist I say in a cold and serious tone, I certainly, have to educate this ignorant boy. Sorry sir says James, he was clearly thinking my words. Grandpa don't intimidate James or I'm going to get mad at you and not talk to you anymore says Iris worried about James. Having grandchildren seems incredibly tedious and maybe it's because I have no experience, I think and tell them clearly I was giving you some advice. Where did you see your grandfather, bullying your little boyfriend? You could see the faces of both young people blushing, they were clearly in love and I think I know what is happening here, 
I am the leader of the neutral wizards and Harry is the leader of the wizard's light. I can assume that we do not have a very good relationship. And it is obvious that the neutrals prospered under my command and the common wizards lagged behind. Or it's pretty obvious, the ones that followed Albus and Voldemort are now being slaughtered why they didn't prosper and these guys from the demon plane are killing the group of light with ease. And if my intelligence does not fail me, my dear granddaughter wants me to help them and apparently I have gone somewhere where she cannot find me or communicate. Let's wake up these three and to confirm why they were following them I say. Sure grandpa says Iris casts the spell and counter spell. To cast the spell, a light comes out of the tip of the wand and the bodies fall, but nothing happens. It is clear that the effect of my spell is a little stronger. Put a little more magic on it and imagine that it gives it more magic and power I say, guiding my granddaughter. It's okay grandpa, says Iris and immediately casts the spell. The woman wakes up and looks around vigilantly, when her gaze turned in my direction, she was clearly surprised she knew me. Aunt, how are you feeling? Iris's grandfather hit you with the D's may I spell asks James worriedly. I'm not fine, it's just that Mr. Maximilian has not aged at all and he was the first wizard I observed when I first attended my first year at Hogwarts, since he was in the Dripping Cauldron and he performed a very beautiful spell he says Hermione. It seems that you are the one with the most alert mind of your group I say and think, oh how I thought I met her before. Really, ha ha, thank you very much sir says Hermione excitedly and apparently I'm Hermione's idol. Have you read my books? I asked out of curiosity. Of course it is, although they are difficult to obtain these days and especially the 18 volumes of White Rituals Magic he says with pity. And what's your name? I ask. I'm Hermione Jean Granger replies Hermione. Nice to meet you Hermione and by chance. Are you related to Potions Master Hector Dagworth Granger? I ask him. This is the second time I've been asked the same questions and I really don't know Hermione says curiously. Well, maybe you can take an inheritance test at the Gringotts and they'll easily tell you if they're related I suggested to Hermione. Really says Hermione. Let's move to another location I say while preparing. To be continued in the next chapter. Comment. 13 comments. Vote. Chapter 35, Chapter 35, It's My Turn. Chapter 35, It's My Turn. In the previous chapter. Well maybe you can do an inheritance test at Gringotts and they'll easily tell you. If they are related I suggested to Hermione. Really says Hermione. Let's move to another location I say while preparing. A continuation. Max's point of view. Let's move to another location I say while preparing a nonverbal spell, which I believe called. This spell creates a portal with a black vortex and when it opens it connects to the other side, which is where it wants to go. When I turned around, I could see the open mouths of the group and I said well let's go. How did you do that? Hermione asked very shocked. It's a spell created by me I say as I look at the dueling platform, it you can see that the soon miling woman. Where are we? It's a Quidditch match. Hermione asks with vigilance. I think we are in France. Says Iris and continues I know that Grandfather participated in many championships and this must be the 1970 championship in France. This is amazing. Is this what all dueling championships are like? James asks clearly he was in awe. It is quite modest for the time, they will become much more extravagant as time goes by and many more people will come for the championship answers Iris and continues in years to come this epoch time, will be known as the beginning of the golden age of the duels. Wow, amazing. Why didn't I know about this? 
James asks. This is because many countries offer large amounts for the event to take place in their country answers Iris as if James were illuminated and continues since the profits produced by tourism, lodging and resource consumption are astronomical. Wow, amazing. James responds. And the reason why you didn't know, is because Britain never wanted to get involved with the Dueling Federation and it was founded in 1977 Iris replied, clearly she is a very cultured witch. What? But how is it possible? And how is it that Britain does not participate? Hermione asks, clearly she has been Deputy Minister of Great Britain and did not know about this. Well. There were countries that did not join the Dueling Federation and those countries cannot enjoy the benefits responds Iris and continues saying the benefits that the Dueling Tournaments and World Championships brought, were of great benefit to politics and economy of those countries. Since connections and juicy contracts for resources were formed. This is unfair. Hermione says. Well it may be a bit unfair but this was done by the wizard named Albus Dumbledore, as he was very jealous of the fame of his younger brother Aberforth Dumbledore, who enjoyed the recognition of the wizarding community. Being one of the ten arbiters of fairer duels in the magical world. What, that old Aberforth, is he more famous than his brother? Hermione asked. Yes and he is a successful businessman since he opened taverns all over the wizarding world answers Iris. No. I can't create it. This is a dream. And I must have fallen asleep Hermione says negatively, clearly it was a hard blow for her. It's the truth and if you can't believe me says Iris and continues then I can't help you. I'm sorry, it's just too much information that I didn't know Hermione says trying to soothe. That is the problem with Great Britain, we are always cut off from the rest of the world and we only focus on our own country I say seriously. If it is true, I Hermione as the British Minister of Magic, I have seen that deal with international countries and they treat us like peasants who know nothing says Hermione, clearly she had had her bad days as Minister of Magic. Oh. I think I should go down to participate in my duel. Wait here I'll be back I say and I walk away. Iris point of view. Good luck grandpa. I say excitedly, clearly I have never seen her grandfather fight, since when she was born, her grandfather had already retired and he was announced as the best duelist in magical history. Why are you so excited Iris? James asks clearly he had never seen his girlfriend. Just watch this duel and you will understand Iris answers with her eyes focused on the platform. Hermione and James observing Iris concentrated on the dueling platform decide to observe as well. Max's point of view. Well, at last it is my turn, they are already announcing my speaker. I was thinking of making an incredible entrance and I came up with an idea to launch my patronum and immediately you could see a 40 meter tall golden European dragon looking for enemies, if I may describe it, it looked like a European dragon, with beautiful golden scales, two legs, and two clawed arms. It certainly looked impressive, it was like it was made of pure gold and I wondered if my Animagus transformation would look the same. A curious fact is that the Dovakian have always had dragon patronum. Seeing no enemies it quickly shrinks to a size of about 10 feet, and I came up with a brilliant idea. I open a portal at high altitude above the stadium and leave my patronum, flying in the sky above the stadium, I apply more magic and happy feelings to it so that it grows up to about 90 meters. I hope the host says my name to start the show, don't judge me, I just copy the fabulous idea of the WWE guys. Why good, thanks to their flashy entries, they have earned their fame and glory, and because I, I cannot do the same with duels, it just requires a little magic here and there. Bang, a crowd elated with fanaticism. 
the host will announce me. Wizards and witches from all over the world. It is an honor and a privilege. To announce the next participant. Many call him in different ways. We have the privilege of calling him the Tyrane. Says a man pausing, with a smile he tells the audience I'm going to need your help, to summon the tyrant. On the count of three we called him together says a man with a sly smile, clearly wanting the audience to get involved. One. Two. Three. Let's welcome him. Dueling Emperor. Tyrant. Maximilian Stephen Dovakian. Says a man with a great frenzy and euphoria. Public in the stands stimulated by the host's words in a great ovation and shouts tyrant, 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 tyrant. Looking at the sight of such an excited audience, he smiled and I see the sky. And pointing with my hand, I cast the spell, adding a dark and lightning weather atmosphere. It almost felt like an apocalyptic environment. The audience in the stands was stunned, when they watched the lightning thunder in the dark sky, when they looked at the dark sky with amazement, they could see a very large colossal being that was approaching or rather, I fell down towards the platform. Accompanied by lightning bolts and a majestic and tyrannical roar. Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
surprised that I knew their language, he tells me. Champion, it is an honor to fight with you, win or lose I will go home with a story to tell Ashanti replied and beat his chest in respect. I close my eyes, thinking about his words and clearly he was a man of very few words. You can then get ready I say that and hit my chest in respect. Of course and now to witness this epic match, our dear referee Aberforth Dumbledore. Says Oman excitedly. Aberforth walks up to the middle platform between the two witches and says I want an honourable and fair duel, you can only win the duel by stunning, wounding or your opponent surrendering and you cannot kill the opponent, understood. Ashanti and I answer yes forward slash yes. This got me thinking of the words Iris, as the Aberforth of the future apparently gained more fame than his brother and perhaps should promote him, with newspaper posts here and there, I think wickedly. We both present our wands, in keeping with the tradition of dueling. I measured half a turn and they walk the ten steps, then they turn me around and look into the opponent's eyes with great battle intent. When the bell rings, the duel starts says Oman. Ting, ting. I keep my wand in the holster of my hand, since you don't need a sub machine gun to kill a duck, and so my opponent walks, I observe him throw at me, with my index finger I point A, before it hits and they repel each other, I push it to my left and keep moving forward with the same spell on my finger. My opponent quickly threw two at me, from my observation they were and, I gently moved my hand as if it were a whip and repelled before hitting to my right, again move my hand like a whip and repel in another to my left. My opponent was surprised by my reflexes, since I was very close to him, about seven steps away and without giving it a chance, he cast the Depulso spell that was already overloaded. At near impossible speed for the eye, he strikes the spell at Ashanti. As if caught by an invisible force, it is thrown backwards and collides heavily with the fence of the stands. Aberforth walks over and to see if he is able to continue. When seeing Ashanti is unconscious he announces the winner the winner, of this duel is the Maximilian Dovakian. Oh my Merlin! What a beating! The champion did not hold back at all. Says Oman. The crowd in the stands, recovering from their surprise, began to shout with excitement tyrant. Tyrant, tyrant, tyrant. Before someone asks me something, he cast the nonverbal spell, and it immediately rises from the ground, a 90 meter colossal golden dragon flying into the sky. When it rises to a certain height, it roars tyrannically. But now the champion had disappeared from the platform. Clearly the maddened crowd tyrant, 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 tyrant. Hermione's POV. So Mr. Max is your grandfather? I ask, but I was thinking. I clearly never thought that this Iris girl was related to my idol and clearly I must have guessed from his last name. Yes, he is my grandfather, even when I went to study at Hogwarts, he went with my grandmothers to another place and no one could tell me where they went Iris replied, without taking her eyes off the platform and continued but knowing my grandfather, it was surely an adventure. Suddenly Roar is heard. Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
That conceited idiot stun us. Asked my husband Ron. Clearly I was quite surprised and I can understand why we only felt our sight become obscured and we fell to the ground passed out to the ground. The worst thing is that we didn't even realize it. Suddenly, the audience could be heard excited and shouting beating, beating, beating. Looking at the platform I see Mr. Max, he is clearly speaking with his opponent in the African language and I never thought of studying another language, apart from French, English and Latin. I certainly discovered something new about my idol, it made me very happy and it's not that I blindly follow an idol. It's just that after the Gilderoy Lockhart fiasco I was disappointed in authority figures and went out for a walk around Hogsmeade. On the ledge of my favorite bookstore I was able to look at a book that I hadn't seen, but it was incredibly expensive, certainly not it was a book that any wizard or witch could afford. On the cover of the book a photo of Mr. Max, I clearly recognized him and it was because he was the same wizard that I saw when I entered the leaky cauldron and saw the magical world for the first time. He left a great impression on me and when I returned to Hogwarts I asked Madame Pince about the book, of which she told me excitedly. He said that his books were not allowed at Hogwarts, plus most of those books were very expensive, almost 3,000 galleons per book, I was shocked. I never saw such an expensive book, I asked him why, and he told me that the man was a legend and a teacher in many magical branches. He was also 60 years old, but he looked 20 years old, and that was because of his own work, thanks a branch magical that he created, the magic of white rituals and with it you could live 500 years and see yourself young. Certainly that day my perception of the magical world changed. And I thought he would covet his knowledge like Nicola Flamel did but not my idol published it in books that spanned 18 wonderful volumes, plus he was the creator of the Werewolf Annihilator Potion. He had certainly contributed to the world magical community and his books were adored by the entire global magical world, translated into many languages. The worst thing is that he never asked for an award and was never given one. He was such an incredible man that when he saw the war, he gathered the magical innocents, he sheltered them in the city that he created to keep them safe. Leaving my thoughts I see platform. Duel is about to begin. To be continue. Comment. 16 comments. Vote. Chapter 37, Chapter 37, Grandpa you are the best. Chapter 37, Grandpa you are the best. In previous chapter, he had certainly contributed to the world magical community and his books were adored by the entire global magical world, translated into many languages. The worst thing is that he never asked for an award and was never given one. He was such an incredible man that when he saw the war, he gathered the magical innocents, he sheltered them in the city that he created to keep them safe. As I leave my thoughts, I observe the dueling platform and I realize that the duel is about to begin. A continuation. Hermione's POV. As I leave my thoughts, I look at the dueling platform and realize that the duel is about to begin. Ting, ting. When the bell rings, I see that he guard his wand in its holster and I immediately think he is going to lose, but I saw Iris excited. Grandpa is going to do wandless magic, don't you miss it, James? Says an excited Iris. Oh seriously? Says James. Oh wandless magic, which is only something that Albus and Voldemort could do at will and I feel like the world has gotten bigger, I think as I watch the duel. I saw his opponent cast Harry's favorite spell and with a simple movement of his index finger. I saw a spell appear with nonverbal magic, I think it is, I never used it much. But seeing Mr. Max use it, I suppose he should practice it and clearly the spell was very useful. 
I could see how he moved his hand like a whip, in a very elegant movement, he repelled the spell to his left, while he walked towards his opponent, his opponent casts a spell that is one of my favorites, and, and at a speed that I never thought possible, he moved his hand in a beautiful and graceful movement, repelling the spell to his right and moving his hand without interrupting the rhythm, he repelled the spell to his left. It was too much for me, but the matter was not over, with the same that repelled the spells, attacked his opponent, what shot out at an incredibly fast speed and hit him. The poor boy shot out of revulsion and hit the wall of the stands and was unconscious. He clearly never had a chance. The winner of this duel is Maximilian Dovakian. Announces old Abba forth. Then to the host talking excited. Oh my Merlin. What a beating. The champion did not hold back at all. Says host. I could see the excited and victorious audience getting their nickname Tyrant. Tyrant, Tyrant. Tyrant. Before someone asked him something, I saw in that the platform, from the ground emerged an immense creature more than 90 meters, it was a magnificent golden dragon. As it rises high enough in the sky it roars tyrannically and that even my eardrums hurt. Grg But when looking at the platform again, Mr. Max was no longer there, as if he were a legend, who only appeared if he summoned him for a duel. And when he finished he left. Ha ha ha, I knew it, grandfather is the best in the world says Iris, as if she knew that her grandfather would win, but she didn't know how he did it. Certainly, your grandfather is incredible says James excited. This is impossible. How did he do it? Says Ron incredulously. He's a very powerful wizard says Harry, over the years he has become serious and very responsible. Point of view of Max. Hi guys it's me Max, here I am in this debacle of a rift in the timeline and I'll be honest with you if someone had asked me that the golden trio would appear in the year 1970, I will tell you that you are absolutely crazy. But magic has its ways of kicking you in the balls. Now I am behind this group of clumsy who traveled in time, I am listening to them speak. Honestly Ron is a jerk, Harry seems like the blows of life have molded him for the better and Hermione honestly always looks up to this girl. Because if it weren't for her, there wouldn't be a Harry Potter and the Sagas movie. Hermione was either the smartest of the bunch or the know-it-all but she wasted a lot of her potential helping these guys. Listening to his talk I only feel a headache, I will have to dispatch these guys quickly and rest comfortably in my Villa Dre Gala. Ha ha ha, I knew it, grandfather is the best in the world says Iris, as if she knew that her grandfather would win, but she didn't know how he did it. Certainly, your grandfather is incredible says James excited. This is impossible. How did he do it? Says Ron incredulously. He's a very powerful wizard says Harry, over the years he has become serious and very responsible. Ahem, looks like these two sleepers woke up and never would have woken up in the past, you know. By the way, what are you doing here on my timeline? I ask. Mr. Max. We followed two children who stole a special time turner from the British Ministry and we followed them to your timeline says Hermione, clearly detailing the matter in a simplified way. I get it, I said in a serious tone and with little magic. Suddenly a house elf appears in Victorian butler clothes. Lacus bowing gracefully, says how can I help you, Master Dragon? James, Hermione. Ron and Harry stared at the house elf in amazement, since they had never seen a house elf so elegantly dressed and with noble etiquette. And the most remarkable thing is that he looked very proud. Lacus, search the public for these two young wizards and bring them here with their friends I said in a serious and authoritative tone. 
I showed him the photo of the boys. It will be done, Master Dragon says Lacus and disappears from place. Excuse me Mr. Max, but that was a house elf asks Hermione. Yes, his name is Lacus, he is my servant and my loyal butler I reply. But why is he so different from other house elves? Hermione asks, clearly wanting to know more about the matter. Each noble and ancestral house has its customs and traditions. The noble and ancestral house Dovakian, has the custom of treating their servants differently I reply. But I don't understand, why are they different? Hermione asks. It is easy to answer. It is because the grandfather educated and corrected the etiquette of two young elves and mould them to the standards of the noble and ancestral house of the Dovakian answers Iris, clearly, he was a well-trained Dovakian. Miss Hermione, picture you have a pet and that pet, you feed it, dress it and give it a good training. That pet, seeing the care and well-being that you provide, will respond to you with loyalty and in some moment of need. She would save you from danger I said seriously. Oh it's that simple and now I get it says Hermione. Most magicians treat their house elves very badly says Iris and continues but the noble and ancestral house of the Dovakian treats them as members of the Dovakian house and that is because they are invaluable members of the family. Oh but not all noble houses are like that I say seriously, I was thinking, Lacus. He is taking time with his task. Suddenly an elf appears with two unconscious boys, put the two boys on the ground and kneels in front of me and says. Master Dragon, there were unforeseen complications Lacus says in a humble and servile tone. What were the unforeseen? I ask him in a serious tone. The two young wizards did not want to cooperate and I had to knock them out. Master Dragon says Lacus, clearly, he did his duty according to his criteria, but he had to explain the reason to his master. It's not important, excellent, good work and you can retreat I say. Thank you, Master Dragon Lacus says and disappears from the place. Iris, wake up these two children I say to my granddaughter. Sure Grandpa says Iris casts a spell and wakes them up where we are. Albus. I think we're in trouble, Albus. Says Scorpion. Of course, they are in trouble. Harry answers with a serious and a little angry tone and continues Albus, what were you thinking and why did you come to the past with the time turner? Dad I came looking for James, who was kidnapped by that Iris girl over there and who took him away, by the time we tracked them down we discovered that he had used a time turner and so we decided to follow them. By the time we realized we were on this timeline Albus replied seriously. Well let's go back to the future says Ron, clearly in a bad mood. Sure, let's go says Hermione, she knew her husband was in a bad mood, because they kicked his butt and he couldn't help it. Before you go, take this guy saying levitate the body of the demon Sarkin. Is he unconscious or is he dazed? Hermione asked cautiously. What, how did this guy get here? Says Ron, clearly his perception of the world was very narrow. How did you capture him Mr. Max? Harry asked. It was very simple, I cast the Dismayus spell on him and he fell to the ground like lead I replied with a smile. I understand Mr. Max. We will take him says Harry. The group ties the chain of the time turner around their necks. Grandpa, you are the best in the world says Iris, before the grey flash disappears. Comment. 19 comments. Vote. Chapter 38, Chapter 38, A Man of Enduring and Taking Advantage of Circumstances. Chapter 38. A man of enduring and taking advantage of circumstances. Hello friends. It's me, Max, your favorite fictional protagonist. Currently I am in my private box, 
seeing the place where my granddaughter disappeared and turned the clumsy who traveled time. I was thinking about what kind of shit I will get into in the future, I can only take precautions and prepare my descendants for the matter. Certainly, I could trace and seal the passage to the demon plane, but I'm too lazy to do so. Besides, it was all that he old Albus fault and I can't go through life cleaning up all his shit. While thinking about what kind of shit would happen in the future and how unfortunate I am. Suddenly, four beautiful intruders enter my private box, holding me down and restricting my movements, I knew I could free myself from my restrictions at any moment, but I decided to observe what the four women it was planned for my Subject it tight, sissy. So he doesn't move. Says Dora. I already have subject it, sister. Says sissy. Can you tell me what you are doing girls? He asked in a high voice, pretending and acting surprised. Oh dear husband, we the sisters, we have decided to torture you with sexual pleasure. Until you accept our fifth sister Tatiana says Bellatrix and in a sensual way, but with a lot of suspense. She clearly liked the idea of torturing me. I on the other hand, raise my left eyebrow in a questioning way and it's because I won't tell you, my real thoughts. And I said oh you better let me go girls or things could get really bad for you for. You know, dear husband. Rita says as he runs his hand across my chest in a completely provocative and exciting way. And she continues saying things are already very bad for you, husband and you can only keep quiet like a good husband, bear all our ideas of torture. Upon hearing Rita's indecent proposal, I was puzzled and it was because I wanted to know what he had planned for me these four women. Suddenly I feel someone touch my lips. It was Andromeda she liked to kiss and touch my lips, clearly she had a little fetish. Bellatrix, me pull my pants down and she sit me on the couch in my private box. Then I see Sissy close the curtains and the thoughts in my brain run wildly, it was obvious that these women had this planned. Bellatrix, puts my member in her mouth and licking it with her tongue in a circular way, oh Merlin give me strength and little by little she begins to put it in her mouth, from top to bottom in a continuous way and without stopping, but slowly to excite me. Andromeda, stands behind me in a slightly raised way in height, takes my face and tilts it up. She looks into my eyes and licks her lips, saying something provocative it's time to taste these delicious and fleshy lips of yours husband at the end of her words, she kisses me intensely. I'll just tell you, that I me felt like Spider-Man and Mary Jane Watson, when they kissed in movie. Then I feel Rita, unbutton my shirt, starting to kiss and lick my neck. Once or twice she would come close to my ear, bite it blatantly and I was already excited. Soon Sissy arrived, kneeling with her sister Bellatrix and began to suck my balls, oh Merlin or Morgan help, because little by little. I'm falling into the trap of these four women. Rita asks whispering it in my ear do you agree that let's have a fifth sister, husband? But she said it in a way that was not a question, rather it seemed that they had already decided and I could only say yes. Suddenly, I feel Rita shamelessly bite my right nipple and lick it, while stroking my abs with her hands. Little by little this brother, was, falling into temptation. Bellatrix, in an intense and accelerated movement, sucked my member in a very strong way, clearly, she wanted me to ejaculate in her mouth, but this brother had her resistance. I was enjoying the attention my body was receiving, or as they call it, torture of sexual pleasure, of course I couldn't move. I let these four women do what they want with me. Little by little about five minutes passed, let me tell you that this brother was at his limit, little by little. I was squirming, clearly Bellatrix had improved in her blowjobs. But just, when I'm in the last part, 
my excitement to ejaculate. Bellatrix shamelessly stops, she looks at me with a sadistic smile and says husband. I can't let you ejaculate, why still, you haven't answered our question saying while licking and kiss the tip of my member, but in each lick or kiss said a few words. Obviously the impudence of these four girls, had risen to another level since we arrived in France and it is not that I care, clearly I am enjoying my sex life to the fullest. A forward slash n, this guy's thick face is unparalleled. I focus on my magic and guide it throughout my body. Obviously this brother will take revenge on these four cheeky women and I will enjoy the process, ha ha ha. With concentration and covertly I used my legendary technique, the hands of the void. Little by little and secretly so that the four women would not notice, since they were very concentrated with their torture of sexual pleasure. I conducted my legendary technique, touching my girl's private parts in a light touch and as if stimulated the sound of a symphony orchestra. You could hear the melody of small, subtle moans here and there. The sound was very beautiful and exciting. Slowly but subtly I start to use my left hand in the direction of Rita's lower and intimate part, with an incredibly fast movement, I move my hand at a fast and constant speed. Rita gasped and said husband, ha, no, no, ha, you can't do, do this. She had the cheeky witch, right where she wanted her. He he he. With my right hand and a little flexibility I moved my hand towards the lower and intimate part of Andromeda, with a constant speed I moved my fingers and once that other times I pinched her clitoris. No, ha, ha, no, that's cheating, ha. Husband says Andromeda with a gasp and excitement, while she kissed me even more intensely than before. With a bit of focus. I telekinsically moved various invisible hands, towards Bellatrix's bottom and intimate part, moving my invisible fingers as if it were a vibrator. Bellatrix in gasp and excitement commented ha. Husband, ha, Clara, ha, no, you can, ha, do that. With an interesting thought or idea. Plaf. There was a loud slap in the room and a scream. Clara. Ha, no husband. Ha, no. Says Bellatrix gasping and excited, she liked when he was harsh and sadistic with her, if Bella was a masochist with sadistic tendencies. A forward slash n, lucky bastard. Oh yeah, I'm going to slap your ass for being a naughty girl. Plaf. P.A.F. Plaf. Hearing the sound of a variety of slaps. Given that sometimes he slapped her hard and other times without force, hearing gasps and moans of arousal from Bellatrix. Last but not least, I telekinsically moved various invisible hands towards Sissy and she particularly liked it when she was pinched, bitten or squeezed hard. Moving my fingers with little force, with precise movements and with slow movements in the lower and intimate part of Sissy. You could hear the gasps and moans from Sissy. I command two invisible hands to touch and squeeze her butt, a form of massage. I noticed that there was someone at the door spying on us, with a smile I placed a protective and silent barrier in the shape of a dome, around the voyeur, the girls and me. He obviously knew who the voyeur was. Little by little the intensity in the room increased. Let me tell you that the girls had their battle, with the dragon. Another thing to say is that I won the battle, but I lost the war. To be continued in the next chapter. A forward slash n, hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the chapter. I wanted to dedicate this chapter to all the perverted bastards, who say they can't write an adult scene. Thanks for the support. Comment. 20 comments. Vote. Chapter 39, Chapter 39, It's My Turn To and the Difficulties of a Single Man. Chapter 39, It's My Turn To and the Difficulties of a Single Man.
Hello friends, it's me, Max, your favorite fictional protagonist and I am currently in bad condition, because, well. Let's say this brother was in an intimate battle with his wives and where he won the battle, but I lost the war with those girls. My private box smelled of semen here and there, it was certainly the smell of a great battle of passion. He he he. With little cleaning magic, I cleaned the area and saw my exhausted wives, the voyeur who was spying on us had already left, but I knew I would see that woman very soon. Currently I put my eyes on the dueling platform, the duels have just resumed about an hour ago and four people to go buy drinks, food or just go to the bathroom. It is currently my turn, but let me give you a summary. Round of 16 1. Aziz Zala vs Tatiana Alianovna Romanova Winner, Tatiana Alianovna Romanova I'll tell you that Tatiana kicked Aziz's ass, much more humiliating than when she defeated old Walter and a crushing victory on Tatiana's part, whether clearly she was on fire or in a hurry. Because, well, just maybe or maybe she was very excited to be on the voyeur. 2. Alfard Black vs Persephone Raptis Winner, Persephone Raptis The defeat of the poor man Alfard, was because the man was weakened from using the support spell and Persephone defeated him quickly, but was defeated with dignity. 3. Lauterio Lindstrom vs Jack Duke and Hammer Winner, Jack Duke and Hammer It was an epic battle, of such magnitude that he bastard turtle. I had to admit that the old Elouterio had his thing and it was because somehow he managed to break his turtle shell and give him a battle. I thought Elouterio would defeat him, because somehow during the match he managed to reach the fifth low magic stage and he was surprised by his unexpected magic breakthrough, but Jack didn't give him a chance. For Soong Myling vs Maximilian. I am currently preparing to be named to make an eye-catching entry and to be able to leave my beloved admirers and fans ecstatic. Point of view a man Valalignum. Work days like today are exhausting, but I have no alternative since my house owed a lot of money and the goblins bought the debt, now I work for the goblins. You may not believe me, but this it host makes a lot of money and I really don't understand how I haven't been able to marry someone but since last year the requirements of magical women increased. Yes gentlemen, you listened to me correctly and now it is very difficult to marry a witch, why the requirements of young witches are. First, there is the bastard of Maximilian, who is the ideal prince of every witch in the world and how did that happen, only Merlin would know the answer. A forward slash n, I, I know the answer, ask me and I will answer you. He he. Second, young witches look for you according to your achievements or titles, for example, you have three master's degrees in some magical branch, so I must congratulate you because you are an eligible a candidate for husband. Also if you have the famous masteries of white rituals, then you do not have to worry about anything and why automatically the witches will come to you like bees to honey. A forward slash n, shit. It seems like life in the wizarding world is tough for singles without talents. Third, as you know the magical world has changed and the economy is increasing, so you must have a financial backing or a plan for the future, because if you do not have it, unfortunately you will not be eligible for any sane and intelligent witch. A forward slash n, that's what is happening all over the world friend. Fourth because of the bastard Maximilian, many magicians have given ourselves the task of doing exercises to have abs and a good body, because if you don't have a good body now you are screwed. Well unless you are a master of white rituals then you don't have to worry about your looks and it is because every witch's second dream or rather her second option is to marry a master of white rituals. A forward slash n, who was the bastard? who invented this white ritual thing. Oh it was me, ahem. What an incredible thing I made up.
If you manage to fulfill at least two of those requirements I must congratulate you, since you are an eligible candidate for a husband and you are a good handbill for marriage. I am currently on the platform, watching people liven up the atmosphere and clearly, I was looking forward to watching the last fight of the round of 16. Wizards and witches all over the world. I am pleased to announce. The last showdown of the round of 16 round. Are you ready to see them? I ask in an emotional and exciting voice. The animated audience shouted in excitement we are ready, we are ready. I see my boss the goblin, who tells me to hurry up and since a short break is coming, where people can take the opportunity to buy their things. Let's welcome Miss Soong Mai Ling I say. From the entrance you could see Soong Mai Ling walking, she wore a scarlet red traditional hamfu and striking ornaments in white flower patterns, certainly she dressed as if she were an ancient Chinese empress. Don't start asking questions, please announce my opponent Mai Ling says, clearly she didn't like the host's gossipy attitude. Sure don't worry I say with a smile. If he didn't pay me to do this and I think about, all witches are very antisocial lately. You're thinking of something rude, right? My Ling asks. What a bitch, it's better to finish fast and I hope Maximilian will beat up this bitch, I think and continue saying wizards and witches of the world. Glad to announce. Our champion. I make a dramatic pause and continue but I ask for your help to summon our champion and at the count of three. One. Tyrant, tyrant, tyrant shouts from the public. Two. Tyrant, tyrant, tyrant shouts from the public. Three. Tyrant, tyrant, tyrant shouts from the public. Let's welcome our champion. The tyrant. Maximilian Stephen Dovakian. Suddenly, the clouds in the sky darkened and the atmosphere turned apocalyptic, golden thunder and lightning rumbled in the sky. And as if that was not enough, the golden dragon 90 meters above was flying the stadium in circles and watching its prey on the platform, I have to admit that this host was a bit scared by the dragon. He also had to admit that the champion knew how to make a striking and realistic entrance in such a way that people were in suspense. The golden dragon roars tyrannically. G-R-R-G-G-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-
I keep my wand in its holster, which is in my left hand, and since I don't need a sub machine gun to kill this beautiful swan, walks like this my opponent. I hope you are ready Miss smiling I say in Chinese, with a smile of absolute confidence. A forward slash n, cocky jerk I gave you all your powers. My Ling takes out a Tang sword, which she holds with her right hand and with her left hand she holds the wand, taking a combat pose. And she says this witch is ready to duel with you champion. Then attack me whenever you like I say as I walk towards her. My Ling approaches me and cuts me diagonally with her sword, I dodge to the right. He attacked her with but the girl had a series of agile gates and movements with her legs managing to avoid the spell. Suddenly, she attacks me with her sword in a rather interesting movement and sending me more than 32 cuts at different angles with her tang sword, I use the spell with great power. Immediately a translucent sphere between white and blue is formed, you can hear the impacts of the cuts impacting on the translucent sphere. I realize that Miss Myling attacks me with her wand with the spell, I saw that she was concentrating on her movement and because she applied much more magic to her than normal. With a smile I apply more magic to my, the translucent sphere turns red and the moment it hits. I use the spell, in a ghostly way I appear behind, clearly she was distracted or it was that my spell was very silent. But without giving it a chance, I cast the spell and the spell hits Myling's body, when she felt the impact of the spell, her eyes closed and she began to fall to the ground. I, as a gentleman that I am, I hold her by preventing her body from falling to the ground and carry her like a princess, while taking her to her recovery team, which was made up of many women. A forward slash n, I don't know who you're kidding, but you don't fool me. You bastard and it's obvious that you want to flirt with the woman Chinese. Abba fourth upon seeing the movements of the duel, declares the winner of this duel is Maximilian Dovakian. In the center of the platform I was with a smile and I looked towards the audience that was silent, as if they were waiting for something. I knew what they were waiting for and with a smile I raised my fist to the air and immediately a roar is heard. From the ground, a golden dragon flew into the sky, roaring tyrannically and the crowd in the stands was excited, but when they looked at the platform, the tyrant had retreated. As if it were a legend who only comes for a duel and retires after the battle. Little by little the wizards and witches in the rostrum began to think that the young wizard Maximilian was a mythical being. The next chapter will continue. A forward slash n, I would like to thank each person who continues to read my story. Thanks for the support guys. Comment. 10 comments. Vote. Chapter 40, Chapter 40, Profit and Mischief. Chapter 40, Profit and Mischief. G equals Galleons. S equals Sickles. K equals nuts. Max's point of view. Hello friends, it is me, Max, your favorite fictional protagonist and I am currently in a room with the old goblin Gornuk and there is also the king of the goblins nation Ragnuk 14. How are the prophets going? I ask with a smile. We have never stolen so many witches and wizards. Ahem. We have never done such a good business with wizards and witches the old Gornuk shouted excitedly, but suddenly he realized his words and corrected them. Ha ha ha, you can't blame us, young tyrant and it's because this business is so lucrative says the goblin king Ragnuk. Yes young tyrant, currently we have collected more than 450 million G with 7,000,000,000s and 38,000,000,000,000k says the old goblin Gornuk excitedly. N forward slash o, that being a lot of money. Certainly, it is more or less what I had estimated and asked how were the underground gambling. Excellent. 
my sixth son Ragnok is taking care of the matter, he has just passed a summary and the earnings cover more than 700 million G with 150,000,000,000 S and 13,777,111,666 K says the Goblin King Ragnok, clearly while everyone they enjoyed, the goblins and I, we had to be aware of the accounts and earnings. A forward slash n, t s k you bastards. How were the grocery and beverage sales? It is going great, young tyrant and currently the earnings are astronomical, but we will have a summary of the earnings soon says old Gornak. How was the negotiations with the French ministry? I ask. We reached an agreement to give him 21.07% of the profits we generate. The French Magic Ministry is very excited and since he will practically earn a lot of money doing nothing answers the Goblin King Ragnarok. Hum, spread the word and spread the deal we made with the French Magic Ministry with the other ministries. Also have them see us in a way that we lost a lot of profits in this deal I say seriously. I like the idea, we can use the old strategy of looking like pitiful beggars and that we lost a lot of money, just to make the French Ministry of Magic feel more comfortable with the deal says the old goblin Gornak. Ha ha ha, that idea is fabulous, but we have to be careful when we divulge the information and because the other ministries want a piece of the cake says the goblin King Ragnarok. So that nobody complains we will give them 4% for having announced the championship in the other magical ministries and we look for a way to gain more political influence in those countries I say with a smile. We will do it, young tyrant. Anything else you want us to do? Asked the old goblin Gornak. Yes, there is another thing, gather resources secretly and it is because the future will be another war, we must prepare in advance for the matter I say seriously. Clearly I am anticipating the debacle of the demons. So we will young tyrant says the old goblin, without questioning my request. Will there be another war, young tyrant? Asks the goblin king Ragnarok. Yes, there will be in the future goblin king, approximately in the year 2018 and the magicians who do not join us will be the ones who will suffer massive casualties I say seriously. Clearly I was thinking about the matter of my granddaughter Iris with him boy James. Obviously I must calculate and change the future of my granddaughter, well it all depends on the circumstances. Oh dear granddaughter your beloved grandfather would not allow it, obviously someone wants to make fun of me with this magical Romeo and Juliet shit. Oh maybe. Leave your education outside Andromeda and Sissy with that I'm sure it will be a different witch. How did you find out about this matter, young tyrant? Asked the Goblin King Ragnarok. One of my descendants, travelled from the future with a time turner to warn me of the matter and I will not go into details, since the future they saw can be changed by my actions I say seriously. Well. I'll talk to the council elders and the goblin nation will trust you, for this matter of war says the goblin king, clearly I had earned the respect of these boys. Suddenly, a cruel thought crossed my mind and with a cruel smile I say let's also promote and spread the name of old Abba Fourth Dumbledore, let's make him look like a great magician and businessman worldwide. A forward slash n, astute, he he he. Why would we do that young tyrant? The old goblin asks, clearly he didn't want to waste resource on that. Well, I've always known that old Albus is an envious man and what better way than to show it, that we use his brother Abba Forth I say with a cruel smile, I was thinking of a plan to screw old Albus patience. He he he. Explain to us to join in the fun says Goblin King Ragnarok with a smile. Yes, the Goblin King Ragnarok hated old Albus, because many goblins died because of him and the Goblin King Ragnarok had not forgotten what happened at that time. The plan consists of several steps, first, we promoted Abba Fourth. Second, 
we bought all the supplies of lemon and the lemon candies in all of Britain, started selling them in the taverns of old Aberforth. Ha ha ha, just imagine her face, ha ha ha. Going to buy the lemon candies, ha ha ha, at his little brother's taverns, ha ha ha, it will be priceless, ha 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 I say laughing, clearly it would be fun to see old Albus trying to buy. Ha ha ha. I can imagine it, ha 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 says the Goblin King Ragnar laughing. Ha ha ha, me too, ha 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 laughs the old Goblin Gornuk. Ha 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 ha. All three laughing to Tez. A forward slash n, ha ha ha, just thinking about it also makes me laugh, ha ha ha. Oh young tyrant, ha ha ha. I will supervise this task myself, ha 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 says the Goblin King Ragnar, clearly this would be a lot of fun for him and he would take revenge on poor old Albus who would suffer at the hands of the Goblin King. Ha ha, if you need help King, ha ha ha, let me know I'll help you gladly, ha 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 says the old Goblin Gornuk, clearly he would also like to see old Albus suffer. Well. Let's get to work on the serious issues I say, interrupting my laughter and ask how are things with the magical city Heligdom. It will take us approximately four years to gather and search for the resources you requested, young tyrant says the old goblin Gornuk. Try to shorten it to two years or at least three years and don't worry so much about the money, Grandpa Gornuk I tell the old goblin seriously. I understand. I will try to do it as quickly as possible and will have it ready in less than two and a half years says the old goblin Gornuk. You really plan to do what you are planning to do, because if you manage to do it and I do not doubt it, then the magicians will have many possibilities in the future says the goblin king Ragnar. I'm planning much more than that I say with a bright smile. You must have many things to do and I have to talk to my wife Rita I say seriously. Sure, are the youth of these days says the old goblin. Ha ha ha, it's fine young tyrant, we'll talk later and I'll keep you up to date on the lemons issue, ha 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 says the goblin King Ragnar laughing as he walks through the door. The old goblin Gornuk closes the door, leaving me alone in the room or so it seemed. Why? Rita, you can now transform into your human form and you have not yet stopped your bad habit of snooping into your husband's affairs I say seriously. From one corner of the room, a small blue beetle can be seen and suddenly it enlarges, becoming Rita. Husband, I did not do it with bad intentions and it is because I was looking for you a husband. Also the matter of lemons is interesting says Rita trying to make me forget the matter that was snooping. I raise my hand towards Rita and with a powerful suction or telekinetic force, I drag Rita towards me. I place her lying on my lap. Oh yeah, you can already imagine, he he he. P-L-A-F-F-F-F-F. Oh yeah a good, hard slap on Rita's ass. A forward slash N. Oh shit. Clara, husband. I'm not sorry. I won't do it again says Rita with a smile, it was obvious that this witch was a masochist. P-L-A-F-F-F-F-F-F. Clara. Oh Rita, you have been a very bad and naughty girl, I must punish you properly so that you do not do it again in the future I say with a smile. P-L-A-F-F-F-F-F-F-F. Kya. Tell me Rita, how have you been a bad and naughty girl I say with a playful smile. P-L-A-F-F-F-F-F-F-F. Punish me husband, I've been very naughty says Rita, clearly her inner masochist was waking up. A forward slash n, for some reason that I can't explain, I'm very envious. P-L-A-F-F-F-F-F-F-F. P-A-F-F-F-F. Husband, Rita has been very naughty says Rita seductively. P-L-A-F-F-F-F-F-F-F. Kya. Oh dear Rita, you have a nice ass I said, stroking her ass. 
P L A F F F F F F F K A P L A F F F F F F F K A P L A F F F F F F F K A P L A F F F F F F F K A Husband, stop, ha, stop, ha. I'm. Says Rita gasping with excitement. P L A F F F F F F F. Kya. P L A F F F F F F F. Kya. P L A F F F F F F F. Kya. P L A F F F F F F F. Kya. Ha. I'm. Ha. I'm running. Ha. Comma. Comma. Says Rita panting. P L A F F F F F F F. Kya. P L A F F F F F F F. Kya. Ha. I come. Ha. 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 Says Rita reaching orgasm. A forward slash n. Pew. T S K wanted more x x x x. If it's been a few minutes after my S and M section with Rita. I am currently enjoying a delicious meal with my wife Rita. Tell me, what did you want to tell me? I ask him with a smile. You are evil husband, my butt still hurts you know and I wanted to tell you, if you would accept Tatiana as a wife says Rita. Clearly, she enjoyed his pat on the butt, but she was being innocent and pure with me. You have already decided and why ask me now I say. Why did I just want to confirm it Rita says with a big smile, as she runs out the door. Ah yes, Gellert Grindelwald was right to hate Paris. Obviously since we arrived in Paris, my wives are more liberal and perverted, which makes me love and hate Paris too. A forward slash n, I don't know about you, but I love Paris. To be continued in the next chapter. A forward slash n. As always I thank everyone who continues reading my novel. Thanks for the support. Comment. 16 comments. Vote. Chapter 41, Chapter 41, Who Will Be the Champion? Chapter 41, Who Will Be the Champion? Hello friends, it's me, Max, your favorite fictional protagonist and I am currently in my private box. Waiting for my turn and I'll give you a summary of what has happened, until now. The quarterfinals. 1. Tatiana Alianovna Romanova vs Persephone Raptis. Winner, Persephone Raptis. This was a very close battle, where for a moment I thought Tatiana would win and yet Persephone at an unexpected and unforeseen moment, which no one imagined. He cast a powerful magic and left Tatiana stunned. Without giving it a chance, I finish it off with Dismayus and won the duel. 2 Jack Duke and Hammer vs Maximilian Stephen Dovakian. Winner, Maximilian Stephen Dovakian. Obviously I won in a magnificent way, I will not go into detail and will only say that the turtle man, he was tired from fighting Elatorum. Now making that clear, I'll give you a final summary of the tournament. The duel for the third and fourth place. Tatiana Alianovna Romanova vs Jack Duke and Hammer. Winner, Tatiana Alianovna Romanova. Oh yes, Tatiana was very angry about her defeat at the hands of Persephone and she unleashed all her fury on the poor turtle man Jack. I will not say more, it was very painful to see. But I will tell you, that she didn't want to anger Tatiana in the future. The final for the championship. Persephone Raptis vs Maximilian Stephen Dovakian. If the final is about to begin. Host Oman can be seen on the platform, ready to announce the last duel of the night and to declare who will be the champion of the Master Level World Duel Championship. Wizards and Witches of the Magic World. I'm glad to announce the last duel of the night. Who will be our champion? Says Oman very excited, he even used the spell to amplify his voice. Clap, 
clap, clap, clap, clap, clap. Applause sound was heard from the audience. IT will be our beautiful Persephone. Or, he will be our invincible champion. Says Oman very excited. Clap, clap, clap. Clap, clap, clap. Applause sound. Now to participate in this duel. Let's give welcome the Red Witch. Persephone Raptis. Says Oman excitedly, he was clearly excited and emotional in his announcement. From the entrance, you could see a beautiful woman, who walked proudly and watched the audience with a smile. She was dressed in her famous dress, which consists of a beautiful traditional red cavei. Red Witch. Red Witch. Red Witch. It was heard in an euphoric ovation from the audience and they were encouraged by their Greek champion. Upon reaching the platform, he observes Oman, he smiles in a slightly excited way and says in an orderly tone Oman, announce my opponent. TSK, what a bitch, what is happening to the witches lately? Obviously I was going to announce it. Thinks Omar and says to continue her words listen carefully. Why should I ask for your help? For invoke. To our champion. The tyrant. 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 You could hear the excited audience and it was clear that they were excited, for me to go out to fight again. To the count of three we will the invoke says Oman. One. Tyrant. 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 You could hear the excited audience. Two. Tyrant. 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 Three. Tyrant. 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 You could hear the excited audience and they were immediately seeing the sky or the platform looking for me. Suddenly, you could hear the flutter of many things flying and when something became visible in the sky, it was a flock of 90 golden dragons. Each of the golden dragons measured one meter and as if they were gathered on the platform, they began to crowd into one part of the platform. Little by little a golden light enveloped that part of the platform, where little by little it began to shrink and leaving the silhouette of a man, who said something out loud, breaking the silence and suspense of the place. It's my turn. Tyrant. 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 You could hear the excited audience. While on the platform I observe the euphoric audience and immediately raise my fist in the air and order my patronum to roar loudly. GG Welcome champion. Says Oman. Tyrant. 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 You could hear the excited audience. With a smile I look at my opponent, although the mature woman in front of me was between 38 and 40 years old, was very beautiful and well preserved, it was obvious that she took great care of her body. Are you ready, Miss Raptis? I ask him with a smile on my face. I was born prepared for everything, but you are the champion and you are you ready. Why did you spend so much magic on that shocking and spectacular entrance? Persephone says with a confident smile. Don't worry, this champion has unlimited stamina. I say with a hint and a wink. Oh yeah, he was flirting with Persephone. A forward slash n, bastard, you can't control your hormones. Hum, that's the good thing to be young. They always have a lot of stamina and virility says Persephone licking his lips in a sexual way and with double meaning in his words. My virility and resistance can last for days without stopping, beautiful Miss Raptis I tell her in a flirtatious way and I roll my eye. Oh, you will make me blush champion says Persephone in a very flirtatious tone. That's the idea, beautiful lady I say with a smile and a wink. Oh Mr. Champion. If you keep flirting with me, 
I can devour you slowly and with pleasure says Persephone licking her lips in a very sexy way. Host Oman was in a corner of the platform, copying all my flirting lines and it was obvious that he would use them in the future, to flirt with some single witch. A forward slash n, ahem. Our man save me a copy, cough. I'm just a man of muscle, flesh and blood, you can do whatever you want with my body, beautiful lady I tell him with a flirtatious smile and a wink. Aberforth, who was watching this dramatic flirting scene from the corner and says ahem, our man announces the duel. Our host our man was so intent on writing in his notebook that when he noticed Aberforth's words and replied in a dazed way eh. Ah. Oh yeah. I already announce it, ha ha. Now to witness this final fight. Our dear referee. Aberforth Dumbledore. Says our man excitedly. Aberforth walks up to the middle platform between us and says I want an honorable and fair duel. You can only win the duel by stunning, wounding or your opponent admitting defeat, and you cannot kill the opponent, understood. Persephone and I answer yes forward slash yes. We both present our wands, in keeping with the tradition of dueling. I measured a half turn and walked the ten steps, then I turned around and looked into the pretty eyes of my opponent but I winked at her and while she was looking at me with great battle intent. When the bell rings, the duel starts says Oman. Ting, ting. With a smile I cast the spell, from the tip of my wand a powerful blast of wind spirals out towards Persephone and she takes several stones with telekinesis throwing it in various directions, but simultaneously applies the spell. I was able to count a total of 11 rocks 4 meters wide and tall, directed at me from various different angles and 5 of them were descending from the sky, 2 were coming from the front. 2 came from my left and 2 came from my right, I could see that one of the rocks hits with my spell, destroying itself and turning to dust. I also noticed that Raptis uses the spell where she appears at a safe distance behind me and preventing me from escaping or waiting for me with her wand to finish me off. With a smile on my face, I point my wand into the air, casting the spell and from the tip of my wand, thousands of jets of red and gold sparks shoot out at different angles. Without leaving any blind angle. Catapum. Zaras. P-U-M. Z-A-S. Bam. Rumble and explosion sound. The sound of impact with the rocks could be heard and even in the barrier of stuns the public, it was not spared from the powerful impacts. It got to such a point, that a large amount of dust could be observed on the platform and it was a dense dust mist. Right at that moment, a voice could be heard that broke the momentary silence after the explosions and said. Oh yeah. While Persephone was distracted by seeing my spell, I teleported behind her and cast the Dismaeus spell on her, she tried to defend herself, but I was very close to her and my spell reached her at high speed impacting with her body. Out of delicacy or consideration for being a woman, I cast the spell and a light immediately shot out at high speed towards the ground, softening it. With little concentration and some modification of the spell, I cast a small whirlwind to dispel the dust. Soon the platform became perfectly visible, where you could see the platform to Persephone on the ground and me standing, arms crossed. Oh yes I win this world championship again. Aberforth walks over to observe Persephone unconscious and declares the winner of this duel is Maximilian Stephen Dovakian. O oh, for Merlin. The tyrant. He did it again. One. One. Tyrant. 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 You could hear the excited audience. Our champion. Undefeated. Invincible. Maximilian Stephen Dovakian. The tyrant. Armour says with great enthusiasm. 
With a smile I raise the fists of both arms in the air and order my patronum to roar with great force and tyranny. Tyrant. 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 You could hear the excited audience. With a smile I apply magic to my patronum, it comes out from the ground where I am standing flying towards the sky and roaring with a great roar. While an audience watched his legend, he invited to leave, as if he were a mythical and invincible being. The next chapter will continue. A forward slash n, I hope you enjoyed the chapter. Comment. 7 Comments. Vote. Chapter 42, Chapter 42, A Pitiful Man. Chapter 42, A Pitiful Man. Hello friends, it is me, Max, your favorite fictional protagonist and I am currently in the leaky cauldron, unfortunately my vacation in France is over. I will give you a short summary of what has happened. First, I got distant relatives, yes, they are the Flamels and Grandma Perinelle is very happy and even she moved to live with me in Ridvia Castle. Also, she is very happy about the idea that I have several wives and it is because she will have more grandchildren for the near future. The positive part this is, that I got a free babysitter. He he he. Second. The final winnings of the World Championship were immense and to such a degree that you could see the goblins smiling on every corner. Third, I won the championship for the fourth year in a row and I am further away from my goal of being a dueling legend. Fourth, I got married to my fifth wife Tatiana and with a sigh of resin, I can only say that I had no alternative. Currently I am at my limit. A positive part is that I am getting used to it and gaining a monstrous resistance. Fifth, the world has entered a phase of prosperity, except Great Britain and why old Albus is doing his part to keep the country late. Sixth, the war between light and darkness has been in small skirmishes here and there, but I do not know how to record the conflict. Now I am here in the leaky cauldron for two things. First, observe how my investment goes with the leaky cauldron, and secondo, give me a little get away from my wives and have a few drinks, hopefully getting drunk. Ha ha ha. Upon arriving at the site, I noticed that it was booming and indeed this business was enjoying good prosperity. I sat at the bar in silence and ordered a high quality, high liquor butterbeer. While enjoying my beer, I look next to me and realizing that there is a man with a hat sighing, it seemed like he had a terrible day. The man in the hat was counting his nuts to order a beer and sadly he couldn't buy a beer. It hurt me so much to see him so miserable that I wanted to do my good deed for the day and asked for another beer, which I offered the beer the man with the hat. Friend. It seems that you had a terrible day and have this beer. Let's do a toast to a better day I say. The man looks at me astonished and says thank you champion and I will gladly accept your offer. I observed the man carefully, realizing that he was my age and I couldn't help my curiosity of question, since he was a young man. What kind of a terrible day this man could have had, to look like it was the end of his life and so much that it hurts a little to watch it like this, so I asked him. Why do you look like you are at the end of your life? I tell him. The man sighs and says I don't want to talk about that, champion. Note that I am called champion twice, that means that this man is a fan of duels and with a bright smile, I ask him insisting. Come on man, tell me what happens to you, maybe this champion can give you good advice and help you with the difficulty you are in I say with a smile. The man looks at me for a moment and with a sigh says okay, I'll tell you what happened to me, but it will be a very long story and I don't think I will have enough beer. Don't worry my friend, 
I invite all the beers you want and to drink as much beer as you want I tell him with a smile. A forward slash n, don't forget my beer. The man takes all the beer in one sip and asks for another, with a sigh he says when I'm in a better financial position, I'll buy you a couple of rounds beer and I won't take no for an answer. Just tell me what time and place, I'll be there I say with a smile and raise my glass for a toast, saying cheers and to the bottom of the glass. The man follows me in the toast and says cheers and to the bottom of the glass. Slurp, glug, 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 glup, arachs. Taking all the beer in one go. The beer is good I say, taste my lips. The man laughs and says ha ha ha. Certainly champion and let's go with another round. Okay, hello and it's the bottom of the glass I say with a smile. Slurp, glug, 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 glup, arachs. Drinking all the beer. This beer is very good, my friend I say, savor my lips. A forward slash n, yo, I'm still waiting for my beer. Neutral smiley. The man in good spirits says let's go with another round. Slurp, glug, 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 glup, arachs. Drinking all the beer. Slurp, glug, 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 glup, arachs. Drinking all the beer. Slurp, glug, 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 glup, arachs. Drinking all the beer. Slurp, glug, 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 glup, arachs. Drinking all the beer. Slurp, glug, 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 glup, arachs. Drinking all the beer. Slurp, glug, 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 glup, arachs. Drinking all the beer. A forward slash n, neutral smiley, me, I'm still waiting for my beer. Slurp, glug, 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 glup, arachs. Drinking all the beer. Slurp, glug, 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 glup, arachs. Drinking all the beer. Slurp, glug, 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 glup, arachs. Drinking all the beer. After a couple of rounds of beers, the man finally started to tell me his story and tells. A forward slash n, and my beer. Neutral smiley. Champion. Hick. After leaving studying. Hick. From Hogwarts. Hick. I thought I would find a job. Hick. But it wasn't like that. Hick. Champion, I've tried everything. Hick. But I was not lucky. Hick. My wife is pregnant. Hick. My parents died last year. Hick. For dragon pox. Hick. But they also left me with debts says the man a bit drunk. A forward slash n, a little bit, he's already drunk. You seem to have a lot of difficulties I tell him, I was also starting to feel dizzy. My wife. Hick. She's not happy. Hick. With my financial situation. Hick. If she isn't pregnant. Hick. I think it would have dissolved. Hick. The marriage contract says the man with great regret and he was even beginning to score a couple of tears from his eyes. Well, let's drink until the body can hold it, let us vent our sorrows and lamentation with beer. Little by little we drank more than 40 rounds of beers and I was already half drunk or drunk. Ha ha ha. Where do you live, my friend? Hick. I ask him. Ha ha, Hick. I forgot, Hick. Says the man laughing. Give me your wizard ID. Hick. I tell him. The man checks his pockets one by one found the identification card and gives it to me, I observe his home address on the card. I focus and use. Point of view of a pregnant and worried wife. In a modest house, 
a pregnant woman was found and paced from side to side with concern, since her husband had not yet returned. Remembering the harsh words he said to her in the morning, she regretted saying that to him and wanted her husband to come home soon, so she could apologize to him. Soon the sound of two drunks singing was heard. I am a powerful wizard, Hick. I am a drinking magician, Hick. You, 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 you I'm a magu drinker. Na 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 na. Hick. Terera Raritatan Hick. N forward slasher, these two guys are drunk, they are making a fool of themselves. The worst thing is that I wait for my beer, neutral smiley. Soon, I was able to identify the voice of one of the two drunken men and if it was her husband, that he came home drunk. Her concern for her husband disappeared, now she was very upset with her husband and tonight her husband would sleep on the sofa in the living room. N forward slasher, usually happens. Leaning out the window, she can see her husband with a blonde man and she couldn't make out the man well, because it was night. As you go down the stairs and reach the door, you can hear them talking. My friend, Hick. He's sure you have the keys to your house the blonde man says to my husband. Hick. Of course champion. Hick. I kept it somewhere in my robe, Hick. My husband tells the blonde man. My husband will listen to me. He told me that he was going to look for work and not to drink with his friends, but first I have to ask the blonde man to leave. I opened the door and immediately noticed the strong smell of butterbeer, but it smelled very strong and I look at my husband, who was having a hard time standing. If it weren't for the blonde man, who carried him by the shoulder so that he did not fall to the ground and I did not recognize the man because my husband does not have any blonde friends. I watch my husband trying to get his key to the house, but he can't get it and I'm sick of my husband's drunkenness, I say. Where were my husband? I ask him harshly. My wife. Hick. I couldn't get a job today, Hick. My husband says, he was clearly drunk and couldn't even argue with her since he was so drunk. I decided to save my anger for tomorrow. Please help me lay him down on the couch, sir I say to the man, who even though he looked drunk I noticed that he was vigilant and a bit sober in his actions. Notice that the man was tall and although he was drunk, he kept his balance as he walked in his footsteps. As I put my husband on the couch, he gets up and starts walking towards me. I watch him pull out his wallet looking for something and pull out a business card. Upon arriving in front of me, the blonde man looked at me for a second and said mm, I hope you excuse the arrival time of my friend and if you do not mind, I would like you to give him a message. What kind of message? I ask him cautiously, since the man in front of me reminds me of my father and he was a powerful man with a perfect noble etiquette. Tell him, I'll wait for him tomorrow at 2 in the afternoon for a job interview and not be late, Hick. The man tells me with a smile, and for some reason that I couldn't explain he looked familiar, it was as if he had seen him somewhere. Okay, I'll tell him I tell the blonde man. Take my business card. Hick. Says the blonde man. I took the yellow card realized it was a little heavy and saw the man walk to the door, but I kept watching him with my eyes. When he walks to the entrance of the house he turns around and says it was a pleasure to meet you, and have a good early morning, sorry for the bad impression that caused you. At the end of his words, he teleported with, left the place in silence and now I could detail that the yellow card was not yellow. It was pure gold. I looked at the name on the card and as if my mind was clearing, I remembered the name of the blonde man. O4 Merlin, Maximilian Dovakian was at my house and drank beer with my husband, if my brothers find out about these they will be very jealous of Arthur I said surprised. 
I suddenly remember the words of man. Wait my husband, he got a job with the world dueling champion and oh by Morgana and Merlin. My husband is being blessed with a good job, I say with incredulous emotion, even all the anger I felt over my husband's drunkenness dissipated. It will continue in the next chapter. Comment 29 Comments Vote Chapter 43 Chapter 43 An Act of Generosity Chapter 43 An Act of Generosity Hello friends, it is me, Max, your favorite fictional protagonist and currently, I am arriving drunk in my Ridvia castle. Little by little, I am going to my bedroom and when I opened the door I saw my wife sleeping, in silence I went to the bathroom. Soon I bathed with cold water and went to bed to sleep, tomorrow will be a new day. I have big plans for tomorrow. Pitiful man point of view. I had a strange dream, I dreamed that I was drinking with my idol, the world dueling champion and we got drunk on butterbeer, then I think he brought me home. I admired the champion very much, why? Because, although he was my age and my generation of young wizards, he was a successful young man. I wanted to be like him when I got out of Hogwarts, but however reality hit me hard and I couldn't get any job, I was lucky to get a marriage contract, since my father established it for me. I didn't want to admit it, but life was hitting me with everything and I didn't want it to emerge or thrive, but I will never give up. Because currently, my wife is pregnant with my child and I want at least to have a stable job by the time my child is born. When I get up, I realize that I am on the couch sleeping and with a little headache, I go to the bathroom. Washing my face, I look at myself in the mirror and I had dark circles, I also had a good hangover. I decided to shower and wash off the beer smell. When I finish bathing, I get dressed and go to the kitchen to confront my wife, who will surely be very upset with me because of my drunkenness. Good morning Molly. How do you feel today, my love? I ask her, I'll be honest I was expecting him to yell at me and scold me, for arriving drunk last night. However, she greeted me with a happy smile and it was strange because she has had many mood swings due to the pregnancy and our financial situation. Good morning my husband, I feel good and you says Molly with a happy smile on her face. Feeling that my wife was acting strange today, I sat at the table to read the prophet and have a cup of coffee. I'm feeling a bit hungover Molly and I'm fine I reply to Molly and put my eyes on the headline of the newspaper. The Dark Lord Voldemort was wounded by Albus Dumbledore, by Rita. Just when I was about to read it, my wife asked me something that left me puzzled. What are you doing? Molly asks me, but inside of me I was baffled and that's why I thought she would yell at me. I'm reading the newspaper I reply. Molly yells at me Arthur Weasley. What are you doing? Puzzled. I preferred to play dumb and ask Molly, my love, what are you talking about? A forward slash n, a wise decision. Molly tells me yelling the champ, he's waiting for you for the job interview and he can't be late. Now yes, I am completely puzzled and how I got to have a job interview with the champion. Something like a job interview with my idol, I would always remember it and suddenly, I remembered that yesterday I met my idol. Another thing that I forgot is that he bought me a beer and since he was my idol, I did not refuse to have a beer with him. Now after that, my memories are blurry and I think I ended up drinking until I got drunk, I remember the champion brought me home. Molly, I'm sure I don't have a job interview and what are you talking about? Can you explain me? I ask him. She watches me for a moment and then looks for a gold card, if it was my idol's famous calling card. I had heard, that he liked gold and to such a degree, that he usually always made flashy golden magic. 
but I had not seen it with my eyes, since my financial situation was bad and I could not waste money. He left you this business card and said to go see him, for a job interview at two in the afternoon says Molly excited. Without asking anything more, I went to where the business card said and when I arrived, I noticed that it was the Gringotts. I walk towards the entrance I say to the goblin, excuse me sir, but I have a job interview with Mr. Maximilian and they told me to come here, for the job interview at two in the afternoon. The goblin's reaction was strange and because at first, he looked at me harshly. However, when he saw the gold card his attitude changed and he looked at me with respect and I even saw envy in his eyes. Strange, no one had envied me since I graduated from Hogwarts and it was very strange, but I kept walking where he told me to go. I wait a moment and knock on the door. Knock knock. From the other of the door they say pass. Point of view Max. When I got out of bed, I realized that it was after 11 in the morning and my wives had already left, I take a bath. I went to the Gringotts, because I wanted to see my accounts and investments. Upon arriving at the Gringotts, he went straight to work with a coffee in hand and quickly took out my accounts and my calculations, everything was perfect. Now I put my eyes on the newspaper The Profit and read the headline of the newspaper, I laughed out loud. The Dark Lord Voldemort was wounded by Albus Dumbledore, by Rita. Dear readers, wizards and witches in our community, yesterday the battle between light and darkness took place. While most witches and wizards slept comfortably in their homes, a secret battle took place. This reporter Rita following a lead, which took me to the battle site and when I arrived I realized that things are very bad for both sides. Why did Albus Dumbledore take this reporter Rita's advice to heart and train her sheep troops, so that they would not die in the fervor of battle? However, this reporter Rita, noticed that despite the training the light side was losing and at that moment Albus Dumbledore arrived, attacking Voldemort in a surprise attack. Who after being attacked by surprise, ordered the withdrawal of his troops and little by little also withdrew from the battle. This reporter Rita, had the pleasure of interviewing the Dark Lord Voldemort and asked him what he wanted to achieve with this, he responded briefly saying, that he only wanted him to return his things that were stolen from him. Now this reporter Rita is puzzled and intrigued. What did Albus steal from Voldemort? Why so much mystery? These are questions that we don't know the answer to but one day I'll find out or stop calling me Rita. Ha ha ha, certainly Rita was improving on her playing and now I realized that it was almost two in the afternoon. I thought about my next move, decided to get involved with Ron's dad and just to think that the little prick called me uncle, I find it gratifying for some reason. Also, I realized that my approach was a bit wrong and why I have to get involved a bit so that my enemies lower their guard. I am currently waiting for Arthur Weasley, if I am going to give Arthur a job and it is because I always liked Arthur's attitude. Also, my real goal is to change the Weasley's story a bit and I know Molly is a smart woman, she wouldn't join the Albus cause without a reason. When I think about it, my ideas and plans turn in a more effective way with the Weasley's. Knock knock. Here it is and I say come in. You can immediately observe Arthur entering the office, he seemed very nervous and very enthusiastic. Good morning my friend, how do you feel about the hangover and how is your wife I say with a smile. Champion, I'm here for the job interview and I'll be honest with you, I didn't remember the interview, until my wife mentioned it to me says Arthur nervously. I'll be honest with you Arthur. I generally don't do this and I usually let my employees take care of these things, but I like you my friend and I will make an exemption I say with a smile. Thank you champion says Arthur. At first I thought you were cheating on me, 
but when I saw your pregnant wife and I can't help but remember the difficulties you mentioned to me I say with a serious tone of voice. I would never do that champion says Arthur. Saying that, I will entrust you with an opportunity and a way to advance to job prosperity, where you will be able to ascend your position according to your achievements I say with a serious tone of voice. When probing him with legitimacy I saw that he was thinking of, after so much time of difficulties, finally someone gives me a chance and nothing less than my idol, I cannot disappoint him, thinks Arthur and says with enthusiasm champion I will not disappoint you. I can have you in my team to supervise muggle artifacts and you will have to work hard, you will have a monthly salary of 600 galleons where overtime and bonuses are not included I say with a smile. When probing him with legilimency I saw that he was thinking of, he said 600 galleons, oh Merlin and this is my lucky day, Arthur you should not miss this opportunity, thinks Arthur and with we study he tells me champion do not worry, I will not disappoint you and I will give what better of me at work. Well, if something happens and you need help, don't forget to ask me, because that's what friends are for I say with a smile. I will try not to forget him champion says Arthur seriously. Now, putting that issue aside. How did you survive your angry wife? Because she wanted to kill us with her eyes last night, for having come home drunk and it seemed that she was not very happy I jokingly say with a smile. Ha ha ha, she usually does that but there is no need to worry, because she is not angry and rather she seemed very happy today, which left me surprised says Arthur with a smile. To be continued in the next chapter. A forward slash n, hello my reader friends. As always I thank you for the support. Comment. 12 comments. Vote. Chapter 44, Chapter 44 a charitable cause. Chapter 44, A Charitable Cause. G equals Galleons. S equals Sickles. K equals Nuts. The day after I gave Arthur Weasley a job. Hi folks, it's me, Max, your favorite fictional lead, and I'm currently at the Gringotts, doing a charity interview with three unexpected characters, Minerva McGonagall, Irma Pince, and Phileas Flitwick. Phileas my little friend, how are you and did you received my gift? I ask him with a smile. I'm fine, champion and if I get your gift, I'm very grateful to you for that detail he says with enthusiasm and a smile. I look at Minerva, she is a tall witch, with black hair and an emerald green robe, she stood there watching me. She had a very serious face and from my experience, this witch would hold a grudge against you if you made her angry. I think she is currently a professor of magical transfiguration. I look at Irma, she is a tall witch, with black hair and a black robe, she looked very enthusiastic to see me. She also seemed like a short-tempered woman given that she seemed overly protective of books and as such quite unpopular with students, but nonetheless, she looked very professional in her craft as a librarian. There is no need to thank me, my little friend Phileas and who are these two ladies who accompany you I ask her with a smile. Let's introduce you to the transfiguration teacher, Minerva McGonagall and our librarian Irma Pince says Phileas with enthusiasm and a smile. Obviously, I was very happy, I'll be honest, I received them today because I wanted to see and confirm my suspicions, about something. These three are not yet part of the Order of the Phoenix or they were not yet trusted by Albus. It's an honor to meet two beautiful ladies and what can I do for you I ask him with a smile, obviously knowing why he was here and it is that currently Hogwarts has no funds to finance classes or muggle-borns because of Albus. His mismanagement was frowned upon by the Wizengamo board, where Archerus Black strongly criticized him and was nearly suspended as direct, however, a new manager was appointed. 
who is Phileas Flitwick as a manager of the Hogwarts funds. He is currently here seeking my support and because I am the richest man in Britain. Now, you may be wondering, how was Dumbledore's mismanagement discovered? Simply your server Max, pulled the strings behind the scenes and by chance the information came to the hands of one of the Death Eaters, who was Lucius Malfoy. Lucius Malfoy trying to win the favour of his Dark Lord Voldemort generously offered it to him and then Voldemort passed it on to a corrupt member of the Wizengamo. A brilliant plan, right? Champion, I come to you today humbly and requesting your help, as the Hogwarts budget was sorely misused. We do not have enough funds for Muggleborn, nor do we have funds for potion materials and we also lack funds to supply food for the students this year, if things continue their course of action. We will not be able to teach this year at Hogwarts Phileas says in a pitiful tone. Well, it looks like my actions either burned Albus Dumbledore's funds quickly or was it the war he's leading with Voldemort? Ha ha ha, whatever, it's my fault and now the karma is coming back to me, trying to balance the fate of the world. I understand Phileas. How much budget does Hogwarts need and how many courses are they currently giving at Hogwarts? I ask him seriously. The budget is 346,777 G with 75,663 S and 11,001 K. Over the years many magical subjects have been banned or there is no budget for them and that is why I am here today because I would like to relive the best years of Hogwarts says Phileas seriously. I knew Phileas was the right man to ruin all of Albus's long work and that old man still doesn't know what I have in store for him or my plans to ruin his life. I can finance Hogwarts with three conditions I tell him seriously. The three of them stare at me in surprise, but immediately their faces turn serious and Phileas starts the conversation. What are your conditions, champion? Phileas asks cautiously. First, I want dueling to be a Hogwarts subject, I say seriously. The three of them see their faces being sane and Minerva says Lord Dovakian, we agree with your request, but with he, it the budget will increase more and we do not know whether to agree. Money cannot be compared with the future of our young magicians and it is because towards the future, it is where we all do not go. The world will advance and our young magicians will be outdated by something as mundane as money. I prefer to invest the future of promising young people, than a useless and incompetent old wizard who would only keep holding me back, in my advance towards a better future I say with an emotional and wise voice. Even I was surprised by my words. I saw an Irma copying my words into a notebook, Minerva looked surprised by my words and Phileas's eyes were red, I think he even shed some tears. Beautiful words, Lord Dovakian says Irma excitedly. I believe that she is a loyal follower of my books and therefore an admirer of my work. I will give you Hogwarts. A budget for this year of 2,500,000 g and I hope it is enough, to lead Hogwarts to a high quality education and the best in the world I say seriously. Oh yeah, I'm going to screw old Albus at his base of operations and regulate him, with his directorial budget or privileges. An evil and ingenious plan, right? He he he. Hearing the number of galleons. Let's just say the three of them were very excited about the idea and were very optimistic about the future of Hogwarts. What is your second condition, champion? Phileas says with excitement and joy. My second condition is that Masteries of White Rituals be a Hogwarts subject I said with a smile on my face. You may not believe it but there are already teachers in that magical branch and 70% are witches, because witches want to look beautiful throughout their lives. I saw that Minerva and Irma's eyes flickered with excitement and enthusiasm. Phileas on the other hand, did not see any problem and I replied we agree. 
Your third condition, champion. My third condition is, I want to observe the Hogwarts facilities and I want detailed expense reports I say seriously. Stunned Minerva asks to what end. I wish to observe, if the castle needs an update and it is because over the years, they have not made any modifications I say seriously. Obviously I am going to modify Hogwarts at my discretion and preference. It can be fixed says Minerva and then continues why do you want detailed expense reports? Humans are greedy creatures by nature, it is seen brothers and relatives fight to death, for a handful of gold or a magical artifact. It is something that is in the nature of every human, sometimes the greed is greater than others and other times they are modest or honored. That is why I want to observe that my investment in the future of British magic and our young British magicians, is used every galleon in its entirety in them and for them I say seriously and with a tone of voice deep and wise. The three of them react in different ways, on the one hand, Minerva had an expensive reflection on my words and thought about what to say to me. Irma on the other hand, was writing my words and analysing them as if she was thinking of something. Finally, Phileas who was excited, that I wanted to invest in the magical future of the British and the young talents of magic. Minerva looks at me and says Lord Dovakian, rumours about you do not do you justice and why you are a charitable man, who cares for the good of thousands of magicians. With a smile I answer him in a deep and wise tone I am only a man, who lives the best moment of his life. At this moment I am rich and famous, but in the future I may be a poor and infamous man. Since life spins like a roulette wheel and sometimes we have to play with what we got. You are certainly right, champion. Says Phileas with excitement and enthusiasm. Great words of wisdom says Irma, who kept writing in her notebook. I also hope that you continue to be the manager of this Phileas investment and that you can supervise the dueling classes, because only you, understand my love for the sport, without offending the ladies I say with a smile. Obviously I was going to give Phileas all the credit and I'm not going to let Albus steal the glory from our little friend Phileas. No. We are not offended Lord Dovakian and it is honoured that a dueling champion like you takes an interest in the young talents of magic says Minerva, with a rare smile on her face and it was obvious that she was in a good mood. Minerva, you have fallen short with your words and why Lord Dovakian is not an ordinary dueling champion says Phileas with a smile. Then what is he champion of? Minerva asks. Obviously she was not interested in the sport of dueling and remained ignorant of the novelty. Phillies with a smile responds Minerva, Lord Dovakian is the world champion of duel and that makes him the most lethal wizard in the world magic community. Minerva looks at me with wide eyes and says wow, Lord Dovakian had no idea of your fame and prestige, I apologize if I offended you. Don't worry. It doesn't offend me and let's sign the documents, to transfer the money for this Hogwarts school year. All three respond simultaneously yes forward slash yes forward slash yes. It will continue in the next chapter. A forward slash n, thank you for the support you give to my story. If they see any error or word that is not agree. Highlight the paragraph. Since I always have problems with, forward slash he forward slash she forward slash his forward slash her. As you already know the English, it is not my main language. That's why the words sometimes don't match. I hope that despite my wrong grammar of English. Keep supporting my story. Thanks. And happy start of Christmas. Comment. 33 Comments Vote Chapter 45 Chapter 45 Modifying Hogwarts Chapter 45 Modifying Hogwarts Hello friends, it is me, Max, your favorite fictional protagonist and I am currently in a meeting with Phileas, Minerva, 
Irma and Gornuk. As always Grandpa Gornuk criticized me for my waste of money and when I told him it was for Lemon cause, he immediately agreed. I think he will even talk about this matter to the Goblin King and he will surely want to participate. A forward slash n, oh, a lemon cause. He he he. For the cause. Also, design Grandfather Gornuk, to follow my investment in Hogwarts and with a watchful eye, since money has no friends and I do not want old Albus to pocket it. Now I decided to fuck Albus's hard work. The Hogwarts books were scarce, the law books and books of labels or traditions of the magicians, they were even more scarce. Even the Hogwarts castle rule book was missing and nobody had it, it was Albus' work. Now I have a chance to reformat everything and screw Albus in the process. Surely when you hear the news and eagerly, you are going to want to get his lemon drops. Mwaha ha ha ha. Oh I'll send my service elves with a magic camera to retract and record the moment. Excuse me Madam Pince, as you know my wife studied at Hogwarts and they told me that the books of magical traditions in the library do not exist, is it true? I ask her, acting casually and naturally. Lord Dovakian, the books have been disappearing from the library very frequently and even the Hogwarts rule book is also missing says Irma lamentably. Maybe I can help or donate with a couple of books, since my noble and ancestral Dovaki in library has all the books that exist. Why the motto of my noble house is wealth and knowledge I say to her in a casual way. It is true, that is the motto of my noble house Dovaki in, wealth knowledge and power. Irma looks at me moved and says oh for Merlin, you would really do that for Hogwarts and don't worry, I swear, I'll take care of those books as if they were my children. I can even share with you, Madam Pince, one of the enchantments of my noble house Dovaki in and this enchantment makes books appear in the library again with a smile. Irma looks at me greedily and it was obvious that she coveted that charm and says Lord Dovakian, you are the most charitable man I have ever met and I will gladly accept your donation as the Hogwarts librarian. It will be an honor, to donate knowledge to Hogwarts I say with a smile on my face. The plan is working, it is now to act and carry it out, so that old Albus does not interfere or hinder my work. I will send it to the advice of the Wizengamo so that they continue to scold it and it will give me enough time, to go to Hogwarts to fix it or modify it. I escorted them to the exit and I watched them leave in the fireplace in a flash of green. I'm already looking forward to tomorrow. Next day. Today I am here, at the entrance to Hogwarts, with a team of 200 dwarfs and it is not for nothing bad, but they are the best builders in the world. I immediately see the students, who see me as if it were the novelty of the day and I can also see five people waiting for me, I walk towards them. My little friend Phileas, here I am as promised and these gentlemen who are with me are professionals in the construction area I say in a cordial way. I could also see several students who were excited, it was obvious that they recognized me and it is because he had seen me win the world championship of duels. Phileas happily says welcome to Hogwarts, champion and let me introduce you to my colleagues, you already know Minerva and Irma. Here is Professor Horace Eugene Flacker Slurn, he is the potions master and head of the Slytherin house. At his side is Professor Pomona Sprout, Herbology teacher, head of the Hufflepuff house and head of the Hogwarts Herbology department. Nice to meet you, I guess your Phileas and Madame McGonagall are the heads of the other two Hogwarts houses, right he asked with a smile. It's true Phileas says proudly. So let's get to work that every 50 dwarfs follow ahead of the house to make the notes and see how we can improve the castle, I will follow Madam Pince to the library I say in a cordial way. Sure, champion says Phileas, no one complained, as he surely had his own ideas on this and wanted him to add his own modifications. 
we immediately went into action, each house chief took fifty dwarfs and I followed an excited send pins to the library. Upon arriving at the Hogwarts library, I noticed that it was quite run down and quite old, there were also some students here and there in the library. I search my pocket for two trunks and he enlarged them with nonverbal magic. Madam Irma, could I tell the students to leave the library for a moment and for me to make the modifications, also get behind me I say with a smile. Sure says Irma excitedly. She runs off to tell the students not to leave and yet they part also get behind Irma with curiosity. I take out my wand, as if I were playing a symphony, I apply my magic and soon all the books in the library begin to float in the air, heading towards the trunk on my left. Making another wave with my wand, I begin to transfigure the walls, shelves, chairs, tables, glass, and lamps. Little by little the library came to life, it looked impressive and magnificent, with elderwood shelves, ivory decorations and a beautiful white marble floor. Behind me, I noticed that Irma was crying and I think it is, because she was too emotional. With a subtle touch of my wand, a beautiful mosaic of the four founders of Hogwarts appeared on the ceiling and with a delicacy or subtlety in detail that they would have to spend several days looking at the mosaic, for them to realize. With touch with my wand, in subtle tap the trunk on my right and trunk on my left, soon the books of both trunks, begin to float in the air. At that point I started sending thousands of spells and thousands of nonverbal incantations to the library and books. I will only say, that the students were open-mouthed and dumbfounded, with the magnificent display of the power of my spells and my enchantments. Soon I finished my modifications. What do you think, Madam Pince? I ask she with a smile. It's magnificent and beautiful says Irma, as she looked at all the modifications to the new bookshelves, walls, floor, tables and chairs, and immediately realized that the restricted area of the library was not in sight and I I ask. Excuse me Lord Dovakian, but not I see the restricted area of the library and so I must ask you, where is the restricted area? Irma asks me curiously. You know that. In the minds of the young magicians, if you tell them not to visit something and then they will want to visit that place more eagerly I say with a smile and continue saying so I put the restricted zone in part behind your office and where you can comfortably supervise it, I will also give you this library authority black book. It will tell you or record which student took the book and if they are using it, in a six hour period of inactivity. The book will magically return to the library I say with a smile. Lord Dovakian is incredible, how I achieve such a thing and all this is magnificent, I can also see that the books are impeccable says Irma amazed. Well, I put a waterproof, anti-corrosion, anti-dirt, anti-theft charm on it, among other spells. Also, when closing the library. The books have a self-protection and it will be activated with the command word, close library or open library I say with a smile. Magnifico says Irma with joy, like a girl in a candy store and where they will buy all the sweets that she wants to order. The bookshelves are neat, for example, this bookshelf is about black magic, it does not contain any spell, only reference and how to recognize black magic. To face it I say with a smile. Oh that's unusual and why did you put that there? Irma tells me curiously. Because that is common knowledge, that an aura or hit wizard must have and it must also be common knowledge of wizards and witches I say seriously. It's true says Irma enthusiastically, it was obvious that she would read the entire section of the bookshelf. That beach bookshelf of grey magic. That of beach pink magic, that of beach of enchantments, magical laws, traditions, important magical dates, magical history, potions, transfiguration, duels, quidditch, etc. In the restricted library are the most advanced in spells and knowledge I say with a smile. 
Certainly, all this is impressive says Irma excitedly. I also took the liberty of putting on your desk all the books that I have written so far and I hope you enjoy them, those books are autographed by me I say with a smile. Oh for Merlin and Morgana, that's amazing, I'll treasure them as my treasures says an excited Irma. Soon the chief of the dwarfs arrived with excellent news, if these little friends work fast and are very effective. To be continued in the next chapter. A forward slash n, as always, thanks for the support. Comment. 22 comments. Vote. Chapter 46, Chapter 46, A Successful Younger Brother and an Unfortunate Director. Chapter 46, A Successful Younger Brother and an Unfortunate Director. Hello friends, it is me, Max, your favorite fictional protagonist and I am currently at Hogwarts, putting my evil plan into action, ahem, sorry I correct. I am doing some charitable modifications and remodels. Bway jar 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 jar. A forward slash n, my friend control yourself, you are embarrassing me in front of the readers. Well, putting aside my little explanation, I currently have Hernan, the chief of the dwarfs, in front of me and he is going to give me a summary of what is needed. Boss. It will currently take us three hours to build and install the Hogwarts barriers. Also boss, the place is in very bad condition and you need some modifications says Hernan. Soon he performs a terrestrial magic, to make a model with earth and castle rock. Well, get down to work and I want everything to be finished by today I say. Without anyone noticing. I sent a lot of magic to the castle and where I modified the castle barriers, disable the ones that were harmful to the students, I also put my own barriers. Another thing that I put in the castle is that the castle is autonomous and has its own intelligence, the castle also has free will to do whatever it wants. He he he. How did it happen? Your server Max did it. Everything is part of a plan. While I was distracted in my thoughts, a Hogwarts professor approached me and said. Excuse me champion, I know that Professor Phileas introduced us, but allow me to introduce myself appropriately and how a nobleman should present himself says the professor, he was somewhat old, a little chubby and blonde. With a smile I say then allow me to present my distinguished name, as a nobleman should. Go ahead with a smile the teacher replies. It is in front of Lord Dovakian, of the noble and ancestral house of the Dovakian, my distinguished and humble name is Maximilian Stephen Dovakian. I am currently the world dueling champion and it is presumed that I am the most lethal wizard in the world I tell him with a smile and an elegant bow. Also note, this teacher was not alone and it is because at a considerable distance, there were many students waiting and watching us. My distinguished and humble name is Horace Eugene Flacker Slurn. I am a potions master and the head of Slytherin House, here at Hogwarts says Horace. It's an honor to meet you I say as I extend my hand. The honor is all mine, Lord Dovakian says Horace with a smile. It seems that I use myself for a demonstration of how a nobleman or a magician should properly present himself in magical society I say with a smile. I hope Lord Dovakian is not offended, I only teach my students what the world is like out there and that, if they are not careful, you can offend someone by giving a bad impression or not having responded to greeting properly a noble. So, I took the liberty of introducing myself to you says Horace with a smile on his face, this professor was quite interesting and it is because he liked to introduce his students or establish a connection between his students. It seems that Harry did not know how to take advantage of this teacher in the movie and I think it is due to his misunderstanding that all Slytherins are bad. I think you are an interesting man. Professor and I imagine that those guys from there want my autograph I say with a smile. 
in that he is absolutely right, they are delighted and ecstatic to have the autograph of the world dueling champion, many want to be like you says Horace with a smile. Well, call them, to give them their autographs and then I would like something to drink I say with a smile and a laugh. Thank you for this favor, champion he says with a smile and then turns to his students, saying come on, the champion will sign his autographs. Immediately I was surrounded by a crowd of 40 to 50 students, of different ages and I also saw that more students kept appearing, it will be a long day for me. Albus point of view. Council of the Wizengamo. How come I'm here at the Wizengamo? when that Dovakian boy is at Hogwarts and is doing charity, fixing or repairing the castle. Now how this old Lestrange fossil found out, that he was embezzling Hogwarts funds and I will read his mind tonight, also steal some funds for a good cause. Funds are running low, the Potters are being suppressed by neutral families, and he can't waste much money on the war. One wrong move and they'll lose everything. These are difficult times, lemon candies are hard to come by and currently, even lemons are hard to come by in the country, but I found out that my brother is selling them at his tavern, the Hobbs Head. Now my younger brother is doing very well, he is even world famous and appears in the Witch's Heart magazine and I even heard the rumor, that he got engaged to a Greek witch. I must buy it. As I was thinking about my brother and the lemon drops, this old Lestrange fossil was yelling at me. Albus, you are being warned, another scandal like this and you will be fired from your position as direct, do you understand? Lestrange says seriously, but if you noticed subtly, he's laughing at my misfortune. All right, Lord Lestrange I say with a grandfather smile on my face. You can retreat. Albus. What a bastard, it just made me waste my time and well, at least I can visit my little brother. Using, I get to Hogsmeade and continue walking to the tavern, the Hobbs head. The tavern, the pure co's head was something else, my brother remodeled it into an extravagant and high quality tavern. Good evening sir. Welcome to the Hobbs head. How can I help you? A young witch asks me with a smile on her face. Oh I just wanted to buy some lemon drops I tell her with a grandfather smile. Excuse me, but we have that service, if you buy our drink for the common good and it was named after the favorite phrase of the older brother of the tavern owner the young witch tells me with a smile on her face. I honestly don't know what's going on, but this is wrong, and since he came up with such a good idea my good for nothing brother. I would like a drink for the common good, I would also like to meet my younger brother Aberforth and if you could tell him that I am here, I would be very grateful I say with a grandfather smile on my face. The young witch looks at me suspiciously for a moment, before calling a woman and whispering something to her ear, using a little magic I listen to her comment. Boss. That old man over there is looking for her fiancé and I don't know what to do says the young witch. Okay, I'll take care of the old man and you go take care of the new clients says the woman, who is allegedly the fiancé of my younger brother Aberforth. Okay boss, be careful with that old suspect says the young witch. How can I be a suspect, if I have not done anything wrong and in which I am suspect? The woman who claims to be my brother's fiancé approaches me, dressed in red, black hair and amber eyes, tanned skin. Hello, I'm the owner of the Hogshead Tavern, my name is Persephone Dumbledore, knee raptis, and how can I help you Persephone asks me with a look of vigilance on her face. Hello my name is Albus Dumbledore, I am Aberforth's older brother and I was wondering if I could see him I tell her with a grandfather smile on my face, I tried to probe her with ledger limency, but he had an insolvable defense in his mind and lucky I think did not notice. Okay wait here Persephone tells me. She leaves for a moment, but I can hear her conversation. 
My Sky, a man who claims to be your brother is asking for you and says he wants to see you says Persephone to my brother. My honey is fine, surely he comes to ask me for money, I heard that he got into trouble and it is because of the embezzlement of Hogwarts funds, but he was lucky they did not find anything or if he had not sent it directly to Azkaban says Aberforth comforting his fiancée. My Sky be careful to give him a lot of money, then he will want to come ask for more money and we have to save for our children says Persephone worried about Aberforth. Okay my honey, don't worry so much about money and also remember, I will soon open Hogshead Tavern franchises in all wizarding countries says Aberforth confidently. I'll be honest, I was eating away at anger and jealousy, like my good for nothing brother, they are successful. Soon a man emerged in a black Victorian business suit, with a neatly braided black beard. Black hair in a ponytail. Gold lenses with polished crystals. I'll be honest I didn't recognize my younger brother and it was obvious that the woman was taking good care of him and even his wardrobe was quite good. Okay, I admit it. I'm starting to feel jealous for the success that my younger brother has and I hope it is a temporary or momentary success. Albus older brother, what can I do for you and it is very rare that you come to visit me. Since you and I are not on the best terms since what happened with our sister says Aberforth with seriousness and coldness. Yes, I know little brother and the truth. I just came to buy some lemon candies I tell him seriously and I don't want to have an argument with him today. Oh the lemon candies, you still have that habit of yours to eat lemon candies to calm your nerves, ask for a drink for the common good and they will give you a bag of candies, although it is difficult to get lemons in these days. Why are they hard to come by, little brother? I ask him seriously. Oh you didn't find out right, that's the bad thing about focusing only on Great Britain and it's because in the muggle world, there is a contagious disease that can be cured with lemons says Aberforth seriously. Wow I didn't know, is it very serious? I ask him seriously. See, that's why I told you it's not good, to only focus on Britain and why when something happens. You won't find out about anything Aberforth tells me, as if he was lectured or scolded me. Well I'll have your drink for the common good and how did you meet that woman? I ask with a smile. Oh I met my honey, in the World Dueling Championship, while I was a referee and she was a participant in the championship, one thing led to another, where we united as a couple and soon I will marry her says Aberforth with a smile of happiness and joy. Honestly I rejoice, for my brother who left his bitterness behind and continued with his life, although I am jealous for his worldwide success. Where will the wedding be? I ask him with a smile. It will be in Greece in one month, if you have time you can go to the wedding says Aberforth with a cheerful smile. I will try to make time I say, although being honest I don't really want to go. I'm leaving you alone. Big brother, I currently have an important meeting at the Gringotts with my shareholders and I also have to do other important things, I hardly have time for anything lately Aberforth tells me with a smile. Goodbye little brother I say with a smile. I saw my younger brother leave with his fiancée Persephone and my smile faded, only bitterness remained. Since I myself distance my younger brother from me and now I must live with that. Miss, a drink for the common good I say with a grandfather smile. The young witch sees me and says right away. Soon she served me a drink, which smelled of lemon and liquor, but was bubbling in a strange way. Had to say, it looked appetizing and tasty, but when I told the price I was surprised. The young witch looks at me and says with a smile they are 5G. I'll be honest. I thought at first that I misheard the price, but I immediately realized that this drink was very expensive and not everyone could afford it. The witch looked at me like a beggar who couldn't pay for the drink, so in one fell swoop I paid the 5G and gave her 1G of tip, now who is the beggar, B?
bitch. The young witch looks at me in surprise and says thanks for the patronage as she takes out a bag of lemon candies. I drank the drink in one fell swoop and immediately regretted it, because I got dizzy quickly and I didn't know how much liquor that drink has, but with wobbly steps I walked out of the tavern. Little by little I arrived at Hogwarts, as I walked my step became very difficult and it was because I was drunk, I passed right next to the boxing willow and the screaming house. That it was newly planted and built to house a lycanthrope in my school, so that I could have another sheep in my ranks. As I passed I heard a smack, boom, slash, and I lost consciousness. To be continued in the next chapter. N forward slash o, thanks for the support. Comment. 16 comments. Vote. Chapter 47, Chapter 47, A Shocking and Unfortunate Event at Hogwarts. Chapter 47, A Shocking and Unfortunate Event at Hogwarts. Hello friends, it's me, Max your favorite fictional protagonist and currently here at the Club of the Eminences or Club Slug. It's an informal name for Horace Slurn's favorite students, and I'm sitting enjoying some tea while chatting with Professor Horace. Did that really happen? I ask him. I saw it myself, with my own eyes says Horace. Ha 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 then it's a good story I say with a smile. I was surrounded by the students from the slug club and one asked me. A student champion, what did you feel when you won the championship the first time? I look him in the eye and then I look at the other students, with a smile I say it was a moment, sublime and magnificent, it was perfect while I remembered the moment and continued saying tired from using too much magic and can see my opponent defeated, suddenly I felt for a fleeting moment. The adrenaline runs through your veins. Then I felt a few seconds of silence, which is interrupted by the public and they shout my nickname in an ovation. Tyrant. 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 At that moment, I felt an electric current throughout my body and as if driven by the ovation of the audience, I raise my arms in the air I say with a smile on my face. I also saw that the students were very excited. Well, one day I hope to feel that feeling says the student. You will my boy, one day your time will come says Horace with a smile. Well, if you want I can give you some advice and that has served me throughout my life I say with a smile. Yes of course champion, let me write it down so I don't forget it says the excited student. My grandfather once told me, Dear grandson, whatever you do in your life, do it as if it were the last thing did and live your life to the fullest, in every moment. If you do it that way, you will see that the world will smile at you and when it discounts you, it will be a winner in life I say with a smile. Big words, champion and how are you doing here at the slug club says Professor Horace. I'm having a great time and if there is any time in the future, feel free to invite me to your slug club I say with a smile. It was clearly what Horace wanted and so did I. I wanted an excuse to visit Hogwarts. It will be an honor to have you here at the slug club says Horace with a smile. We can also exchange letters and keep in touch I say with a smile. That would be a privilege and I will gladly accept it says Horace with a smile. Suddenly, a student walks through the door and interrupting the joyous moment of the meeting and many looked at him with a murderous look on their faces, but the boy did not realize, because he was worried. He keeps running towards Horace and whispers something in the professor's ear, curiously he uses magic to hear the whisper. Professor an emergency. The principal Dumbledore was injured by the boxing willow and is unconscious in the screaming house, as is my head of house I am informing him, Professor says the student. Oh shit, how did that happen and someone has photographed it with a camera, I hope my service elves captured the moment. Dwa ha ha ha. 
champion, there was an emergency and apparently Headmaster Dumbledore was injured by the boxing willow says Professor Horace in a stunned and surprised way. Shouldn't we tell the Hogwarts nurse, Professor Horace? I ask him casually. You're right, champ says Horace and turns around he says to the same boy who brought him the news go to Madame Pomfrey and tell her about this, my boy. Yes teacher says the student as he runs away. That boy will be a great journalist in the future I commented to Professor Horace. Oh you believe it and I'll tell him when I get the chance says Professor Horace. I think so, he has all the qualities of a great reporter and I'm sure, because my wife is a reporter I say with a smile. I understand, I'll tell him he says with a smile, as we walk towards the screaming house. Upon reaching the place, I was dumbfounded and that is why. The old Albus was embedded in the wooden wall of the House of Screams. He was unconscious, decides to give him a hand and perhaps in the future, he owes me a favor. I take my wand out of its holster, with a subtle and elegant movement, I levitate old Albus from the wooden wall, where it was embedded. Little by little I lay him down on the floor, I cast various spells to extract the wood chips and he closed his wounds. I realized he was drunk. Internally I laughed, mwa ha 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 you wonder why I am laughing. Mwa ha ha ha, it's because of my plan it went perfectly, let's say that old Albus, every time he wants his lemon candies, must pass a test and that is to drink a liquor drink, which was adulterated with, lemons dipped in dragon tears, then passed through a fermentation in dragon blood and finally, passed through a fermentation with various magical herbs of high liquor content. Obviously with a drink from that glass, you will be so drunk that you will not know where you are and the only way to drink it is in small sips. We jokingly call the drink for the common good, but for alcoholics. Mwahahahaha. A forward slash n, I like that idea. Mwahahaha. Now you wonder why I'm healed him. It's easy to answer, look what happened to him with a little drink and the future will be more fun, ha ha ha. It's all part of a plan, an evil plan, mwah ha ha ha. I me feel like Azen, when I send the shit to the whole soul society. Suddenly I hear a hysterical scream from a woman what do you think you're doing? When I turned around. I put my wand away and said excuse me madam, I was only giving you first aid and that's because he was in a critical situation, if he didn't heal him it could be worse. Are you Xavier's son? You are very similar to him, when was he your age and, how did you find the patient, any diagnosis? The witch healer asks me. The patient is fine, I removed all the wood chips and closed his wounds but he lost a lot of blood. Oh like your father, you are a great healer the witch healer tells me. Thank you, surely my father would be very proud of me I say with a smile. Certainly, I would be very proud of you and what is that liquor smell, is that you, young man? The witch healer, concerned about my health, asks me. I think the patient was drinking liquor. I deduce that he drank this getting drunk and then came walking in that drunken state, when he was surprised by a blow from the boxing willow there I say, as if the whole process was going through for my mind, but inside from me, I was laughing out loud, mwah ha 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 ha. Oh how unfortunate Albus is Horace says, but you can see that he was enjoying old Albus's misfortune. Without anyone noticing. I took the greater wand of death and replaced it with an exact imitation of the wand, now let's see how the old Albus will do him, to keep up with Voldemort, mwahaha, it's all part of a plan, an evil plan, mwahaha. I can imagine his face when he realizes it. Oh my wand is an imitation. Mwahaha. A forward slash n, friend behave, ha ha ha. I think you should shave your hair and beard, as there might be some wood splinters I say in a subtle and concerned way to the witch healer. A forward slash n, 
that's a very good joke. You're right, I hadn't noticed that matter says the witch healer, obviously your servant Max, only suggested it and I did not go, he left him hairless. Quickly the witch healer proceeds with her magic, bam, a bald albus appears, little by little I saw how they were taking, to the wing of the Hogwarts hospital, a bald and unconscious albus. I followed the students and teachers with the witch healer, towards the Hogwarts hospital wing. Soon Minerva and Phileas appeared. Minerva, surprised by Albus's health, asks what happened to him. Phileas also asks what happened to him. Professor Horace speaks up and says looks like Albus drank until getting drunk and walked to Hogwarts, ran into Boxing Willow, where we boasts he was hit. We presume that he was beaten, obviously he was beaten, this unconscious and now the witch healer. Made him hairless and he lost his elder wand. What else could happen to him? That Voldemort visit him. Oh by Morgan, who came up with this idea? I must subtly suggest this to Voldemort as Mr. Business. A forward slash n, I came up with the idea. Minerva was sad for her colleague Albus and says how unfortunate is Albus. And Poppy, how do you find him, does he recover? The witch healer Poppy comes out of the sick room and says he's resting, but he's intoxicated with liquor and I think he drank this getting drunk, only Merlin knows what concerns Albus had, that he led Albus to drink so much. It will take about 8 days to 10 days to recover. Professor Horace Minerva, we must continue with the students' dinner and since it is almost dinner time. You are right Horace and Lord Dovakian, may I invite you to dinner in the Great Hall at Hogwarts? Says Minerva. I will gladly accept, Madam McGonagall I reply with a smile. I followed the teachers and students into the Great Hall at Hogwarts, where many students were eagerly awaiting their dinner. Minerva stands up and says Headmaster Albus is unwell at the moment, as such it's my turn, as Vice Headmistress of Hogwarts and to announce, let's proceed with dinner tonight. Saying that, immediately lots of greasy food appears on the table and total neglect of a nutritious diet. Excuse me Madam McGonagall, but is this the students' food daily and they eat this daily, don't you have a magical nutritious diet? I ask him with a curious smile. Professor Horace asks me curiously what are you talking about, Lord Dovakian? It seems that the students eat what you serve them, but the food with so much fat and little nutritious, atrophies the magical talent of the young magicians. Minerva is the most concerned about the young wizards and asks is that true, Lord Dovakian? Of course, that is true and, moreover. It is being implemented in America, France and Africa. Resulting in the increase in the power of talented youth I say seriously. Really, this nutritious food thing was happening in several countries and surely Albus knew it, that is why it surely increased fatty or sweet food in young wizards. Professor Horace, as a good teacher that he was, asks and says if this is true, then we have been killing the talent of our young magicians for years and we did not know, we must start now. Do you have any idea how to start Lord Dovakian? Sure, I'll take care of it I say with a smile and with magic I say Pyram. Soon a she young elf in a maid's Victorian dress appears and says with a bow, what can I do for you, master? Pyram take care of everyone's food and in the process teach the house elves at Hogwarts a nutritious diet for the entire school year. Do it, I say casually. I will not disappoint you master says Pyram with a reverence and disappears, but immediately all the meals on the tables in the great dining room begin to change to an appetizing and nutritious magical meal. Wow, was that a house elf? Asks Professor Horace. That's right, she is my house elf and thus trained as a maid, cook and among other magical areas I replied with a smile and in a proud way. Amazing says Horace. 
I certainly agree with Horace, he's amazing says Minerva. Here is a magical nutritional nutrition book, by following this standard guide and you will see the results in a month, this is a very common knowledge in other countries I say in a disappointed way. Certainly, we are quite disappointed by this and don't worry Lord Dovakian and I will take care of this nutritious diet myself says Minerva in a professional way. To be continued in the next chapter. This chapter was sponsored by, me, the author. He he. And was directed to, my readers. Ha ha ha. A forward slash n, thanks for the support and I hope you enjoyed the chapter. I'll be honest, I had fun writing this chapter. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for the support. Comment. 28 Comments Vote Chapter 48 Chapter 48 Hearing the Chorus of Frogs and Laughing Till Cry Chapter 48 Hearing the Chorus of Frogs and Laughing Till Cry Hello friends, it is me, Max, your favorite fictional protagonist and I am currently at Hogwarts, where my little friend Phileas wanted me to listen to his frog chorus with his students. Paran Pereiran. Tururururan. Tereiran Taran Taran. Between beautiful tunes, I listened to the Hogwarts Frog Choir and certainly had to admit that Professor Phileas had his flair for music. Why don't you audition and present the Hogwarts Frog Choir at the World Dueling Championship? I say with a smile. I'm sure it would be a very good idea and I'd have a way to introduce the music to the magicians, maybe I'll do it again. A global trend. You believe it, champion and you don't think it would be too much, I don't want to suffocate my students says Phileas in an excited and concerned way. Tell me Phileas, for what purpose does the music teach them, if not it can shine in its abilities and highlight them on a stage where the entire magical world can see it I say with a smile. But you don't think it would be too much Phileas asks me worriedly. I think it would be an opportunity and an unforgettable experience, that they will remember throughout their lives I say with a smile. I think you are right says Phileas. Of course I have it, what's the use of practicing so much? If you don't have a stage where you can show their talent and their constant work in their practice I tell him with a smile on my face. You guys, what do you think, do you want to go and appear in the World Dueling Championship? Phileas asks his students. Yes professor, we want to try says a student. Yes teacher, we want to try says a student. As you can see Phileas. They are excited to try it and as a good teacher you are, you cannot disappoint your students I tell Phileas with a smile. You are right, champion, but we will have to practice harder and thus show that we are the best says Phileas excitedly. I'm sure you will make it my friend Phileas I tell him with a smile. I think it's time for me to retire and leave Hogwarts to come back another day I say with a smile. Let me accompany you champion says Phileas, as he accompanies me to the entrance of Hogwarts and upon arrival, I saw the dwarfs waiting for me. Boss, everything was done as established in the mock-up says Hernan, the chief of the dwarfs. Perfect I say with a smile and continue saying it's time to go. I extend my hand and use my spell, a black circle soon opens, where on the other side was the Gringotts. I turned around and saw the students shocked and even saw the teachers shocked, by my unique spell. With a smile, I bowed gracefully and said it is an honor and a privilege to have visited Hogwarts, I hope to return in the future if circumstances permit. For all the students who look up to me, I give you a advice, studying adequately is the way to success and personal improvement, because without the knowledge there is no triumph. Study hard my talented young wizards and witches. At the end of my little speech, I retreat to the portal and upon entering the portal it closes in a striking way. Leaving the young wizards open-mouthed and it was quite clear, 
he had left a great impression on the young wizards. That day would be remembered as the day when the most incredible dueling world champion of all time visited Hogwarts and stayed for a whole day at the Hogwarts facility. He even transfigured the Hogwarts Dragon Library with his own magic and was named by the students who were present, in honor of world champion dueling, Maximilian Dovakian. Horace Slurns POV I watched the champion go, with incredible magic and it was so incredible that my co-workers were shocked. I can only imagine all the hard work he had to do, to create his own spell and be able to wield it with such grace. I realized that the young champion was a hard-working magician. Not for nothing was he the world dueling champion and considered the most lethal man in the world, that is something, that is not one only with talent, also there, that to practice hard every day. I saw that the students who were chatting, some kept their photos and autographs with suspicion and care. Certainly, I also have a photo of the champion when he was in the club of the eminences and I will put it in the best place on my wall of memories, it will be a good topic of conversation for my future students. Well, it's time for all of you to go back to your dorms and the prefects from him houses to escort the students to his dorms I say out loud to be heard. I wonder if next year I could ask the champion to visit the club of the eminences and spend some time with my students. Max's point of view. In an office at the Gringotts. Hello friends, it is me, Max, your favorite fictional protagonist and I am currently at the Gringotts, in an office with several goblins, which are, the old Gornak, the Goblin King Ragnak and the Goblin Council members. Everyone in the room had a purpose for being here and that was to see how Albus got hit by the Boxing Willow. Soon a house elf service appeared, and handed me the videotape of the matter. We quickly saw Albus being scolded, plus it was a scolding in a thousand different ways by old Lestrange and old Albus just stood there, clenching his teeth and fists at the insults he received. Little by little he finished his scolding. On leaving the Wizengamo he went straight to Hogsmeade, his brother's tavern the hog's head and where he was greeted by a magnificent view, instead of a low-class and run-down place, he found a high-quality tavern. A young witch received him, apparently the young witch seeing his tunic and way of dressing so out of place, went to call her boss. That this case was Persephone Raptis, who, for strange reasons of fate became engaged to Aberforth and both are said to be twin souls because they fell in love and will currently be married in a few months in Greece, where I was invited to the wedding, because I am a shareholder in Aberforth. A good thing about my intervention in the timeline and I hope that more good things continue to appear, returning to the matter, Albus could not recognize his younger brother Aberforth and it was because Persephone, took his role as fiancé very seriously. That she changed all the clothes fix Aberforth's hair and beard, and even change his dirty glasses for a polished one and golden. Certainly, I was happy about this change from Aberforth and secretly, I will send a photo of his Mackie over to the magazine The Witch's Heart. He he he. Albus spoke various things with his brother, soon his brother Aberforth retired and he left with her fiancé. Albus called the young witch and asked for the drink for the common good, but of alcoholics. When he was paying for the drink, he was surprised by its price and before asking, he saw the face of the young witch, who was looking at him as if he were a poor beggar. The look of the young witch, surely annoyed Albus because he immediately paid for the drink and even left a tip. Now came the fun part. It seemed that he was upset and in his irritated, he drank all the drink for the common good, but of alcoholics. We immediately burst out laughing, at how comical Albus was walking and it was very funny to watch, we soon observed, that as he changed from sober to drunk in a matter of seconds. He had to say that this drink was high in liquor and very lethal, for a non-drinker like Albus. Soon he used 
changed the scene and got very close to the screaming house, soon we saw the most comical and shocking scene. Imagine this, you are walking when suddenly, you are hit against a wooden wall and it happened as if Albus were a fly, the boxing willow is a gigantic fly swatter. You can already imagine the scene in your mind. Ha 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 ha. Young tyrant, you must give us a copy of this says the Goblin King. Young tyrant, I'll give you a million galleons for a copy of this says an old Goblin Council. Ha ha ha, okay, then I'll give you a copy, for a million galleons and don't forget to pay me when you get out of here I tell them with a smile. Shit. Damn swindler, but this material is priceless we must buy it and save it to laugh at old Albus says the Goblin King. Shit, he cheated us money with this says another member of the Goblin Council. Soon the goblins left the room, leaving only the old goblin Gornuk and me, with a smile I tell the old Gornuk. These guys, they are so excited by Albus's misery. They willingly offered me a million ahead and didn't waver on the price I tell the old goblin. Ha ha ha, young tyrant you ripped off the council members and they were happy to pay the amount. Well, I won't pay you anything, I'm just a poor old goblin, who's about to retire old Gornuk tells me with a smile. Ha ha ha, I did not ask for money, they are the ones who offered it to me willingly and as a good businessman. How can I refuse money, it knocks on my door I said laughing to old Gornuk. The old Gornuk watches me for a moment and laughs out loud, he immediately tells me ha ha ha, you're right, those dupes offered you the money and it would be rude not to take the money. As your financial advisor, I will make sure you get paid and will collect my fees for my good service. Ha ha ha, what an ambitious old banker. Ha 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 I say laughing. By the way, tomorrow the newspaper The Prophet will be very informative and perhaps our favorite journalist Rita, will be named in the magical story, because she will be covering more than seven stories the old goblin tells me. Ha ha what can I say, my wife Rita is a successful woman and I am glad that her dream is coming true I tell old Gornuk. I'm glad you're happy. But I have bad news for you from Russia and Transylvania, apparently the vampires have agreed to repress your business says old Gornuk in a serious tone. What did you say? I say with a serious tone and the room soon changed from cheerful to cold in seconds. The next chapter will continue. N forward slasher as always, I thank you for the support received. Comment 18 Comments Vote. Chapter 49, Chapter 49, Bad News and an Untold Story. Chapter 49, Bad News and an Untold Story. Hello friends, it is me, Max, your favorite fictional protagonist and I am currently in an office at the Gringotts, receiving bad news. How did that happen? I ask him in a serious tone, if there was something that bothered me. It was the fact that they interrupted my fun and I don't know if it was because of my dragon tray, but it made me moody and irritated. The old goblin knew about the change in my temperament and why the room turned cold, but he quickly tells me young tyrant, they are those vampires who are coveting your fortune and your business. Last night they attacked two shipments of magic herbs and took him away, the administrator of that area wanted to negotiate an agreement through money, but they rejected it. How much galleons did we lose in merchandise? He asked in a serious tone. The old Gornuk with a sigh, tells me 347 million G in magic herbs, with those magic herbs we thought out making various potions and we were going to take the market with other potions of the Dovaki in chain but among those herbs was him main ingredient of the werewolf annihilating potion. I want you to bring me paper and a pencil, then I want you to ask me for a travel permit to Transylvania and Russia, I think I'm going to hunt vampires I say with a grumpy tone. 
The old goblin knew that I would kill that community of vampires, it was because my temperament was violent when the need required it and it would not be good, for the most lethal man in the world to make a move, because it would be a one-sided slaughter. But there were people who did not know the immensity of the skies or did not know that there are people, who should not be provoked, but the fate of the vampires is already cast in the great fortune wheel of destiny. His name is Max the Tyrant Dragon. Well, I'll have all the procedures ready for you within four hours. Get me, one or two extra permits I say, as I close my eyes. Okay says old Gornuck as he leaves the room. When left alone in the room, I focused on my magical wedding ring, which is an artifact, that I create myself for my wives and myself. That he had the purpose of communicating no matter where we are and also if something happened, he could teleport me to where my wives were. Bellatrix, you want to hunt vampires I ask her. Of course, I am and I'm already packing my bags, my husband says Bellatrix, it was obvious that he wanted to go and kill a couple of vampires, so far there were things that Bellatrix had in common with his counterpart from the movie. That was, she enjoyed killing people, torturing them and a new one, having sex with me. Do any of my other wives want to go hunt vampires? I ask with a smile. No honey, we are with Grandma Perinelle, she is teaching us a magical stew and we plan to cook it for you Andromeda replies. How long will it take? Asks Narcissa. From four to five days maximum I reply. Okay, you can go and give the sisters time to rest, also be prepared, because when you come back, we have to give a couple of grandchildren to Grandma Perinel says Narcissa, obviously she blamed me, for her sleepless nights and everything now was my fault, it is difficult to understand women. Even with the library the path to magic is difficult, but it is something I enjoy and it is why it makes me feel alive. Well then. I say goodbye my beloved wives I tell them. Take care, darling and come back soon says Andromeda. We love you and come back soon, my husband says Rita. Come back soon to have our children and take care of yourself in your vampire hunt says Narcissa. Be very careful, husband, Russia is deep and evil territory says Tatiana. Don't worry. It will be a piece of cake and I'll be back quickly I tell them with a smile. Soon when I finished communicating with my wives, I closed my eyes and meditated, waiting for Bellatrix, also the documents. Tatiana's point of view. Hello, my name is Tatiana Alianovna Dovaki in Romanova and I was born in Russia on the 5th of July, 1952, from a marriage between a witch and a muggle. My mother wanted to have a child, but she didn't want any magical nobleman to take her child from her and bewitched a muggle with a love potion, where we were born twins. My mother killed our father, fulfilling her purpose to get her pregnant and she began to raise us, we soon turned seven years old. But sadly, my sister was a squib and my mother didn't like that, so she gave her up for adoption in an orphanage. Soon my days turned grey, because I realized that my mother was a heartless witch and little by little, she began to train me in the magical arts, but as time passed, I turned 13 years old. Where my mother had decided me to marry a pig and was unwilling to accept this union, I told her what I thought, so we discussed that day. Soon I did not hear from my mother for a while until I found out that the pig I was trying to marry killed her and raped her, I thought it was a good thing. Soon, I was able to visit the orphanage where my sister was and we talked, but the world did not want that be happy, because a few days later my sister was adopted. Try to find out who it was and I found it was a ghost family, I feared the worst for my sister. Since while researching I discovered terrible things and was soon captured by the pig that killed my mother. Apparently I wanted to sacrifice myself in black ritual when, I was 15 years old and I needed my purity intact. 
as if it were something magical, the prince of my world arrived and broke into the place, killing every living being in the building, he rescued me and one hundred other women. A young man, I figured he was seventeen and had a cold look in his eyes, but he was beautiful to me. I soon found out that his name was Maximilian Dovakian and he was hired by the Russian ministry, to find the 100 women who were captured and kidnapped. Maximilian was a young man, with three faces, one for his enemies, another that he used daily and the last one was his face, it was the one he showed to friends and family. Maximilian was a vain man, proud and did not trust anyone. He always wore a gold or jewelry garment and found it to be a dragon family tree. I soon followed her, until the 1969 Russian World Dueling Championships and yes, he may think I was a stalker, but you can't blame me, for wanting to know more about the man I fell in love with. He was like a drug, that I needed and the more I knew the more I fell in love with him. But Maximilian. He had such great ambitions that he never turned to see me and seeing him in tournament, crush each of his opponents. I realized that Maximilian was someone very tyrant and with a self-sufficient personality, who did not like to depend on others, I found that tray of him adorable. Maximilian was driving me her crazy with love, he was too adorable, cute and silly. Not wanting he to see me as a weak witch. I started training like crazy and little by little, the next tournament came, where with effort I classified among the 16 best, but I cannot have a duel with Maximum. Frustrated, I tried to sneak into his naked room, where he just looked at me with interest for a moment and then threw me a sheet with telekinesis, where he told me that he wasn't interested in any woman until his family's family tradition ended. I happily talked to him, all night long and time seemed to stop, but when we realized it was morning. He left and I found out that he had to travel the world training for three years. To pass the time got a hobby, he spends his time capturing criminals or studying magical history. Soon another year passed, I went to the world duel championship to see it and where it was time, I was able to have a duel with my maximum. But I was relentlessly defeated, I felt sad and since, I wanted to show him, that I was witch powerful, strangely enough, he sneaks into my room to cheer me up. I immediately tried to seduce him and steal his first kiss, although I did not know much about the subject of kisses from experience, but my mother had many books on kisses. It was nice to see him embarrassed by my kiss and escaping from the room. Yes, Maximilian looked tough on the outside and with great character, but if you could melt that crust out of him then he was cute and adorable. I soon found out that my Max's family was murdered and massacred, but he was forbidden to return until his test and tradition ended. In frustration, my Max began hunting criminals left and right, no criminal was safe from his wrath. I cautiously tracked him down hotel and I found him drunk, where I comforted my Max throughout the night. I didn't do anything grown up, I just hugged him and it was good for Max, because he happily gave me a kiss. I was very happy that he took the initiative to kiss me, then he ran away ashamed of me again and it was very funny to watch. Cute and adorable, but funny to watch. Soon another year passed. I did not see my Max again and I did not hear from him, in months, but I knew, that I would see him again at the World Dueling Championship in France. I soon battled multiple people in endless rounds and qualified in the top 16 where I knew my Max had a guaranteed place as champion. Soon I bribed a goblin, who told me where my dear Max was and with a smile, I went to see him, but my Max had matured. He looked more mature and happier, for a moment I panicked. Why did I discover that my Max married a witch, but I quickly discovered that it was four witches and I noticed that it could be the fifth, since Max did not stop my advances in seducing him. 
Soon two women passed into the room, his wife Andromeda and Narcissa, now you will wonder my surprise, when they looked at me as if I were a friend or comrade. Soon they kidnapped me and asked me many questions, where one of his wives named Rita proposed to seduce him, so that he would accept me as one of his wives. Now you wonder, why these four women looked at me as if I were a friend or a comrade, well it turns out, that my Max, is a dragon in bed and is insatiable, she hardly gives the girls rest. Because he wants to have sex every night. This tray of him impressed me because it was surely a tray of his family. Soon the girls wanted to show me how insatiable my Max was and they went to his private box, where they did a lot of mischief, but only woke up the sleeping dragon. I watched as my Max took out all his lust on his wives and I honestly wanted to join in, but wanted my first night with him. He was mine and only mine because I didn't want to share it with anyone that night. When I came to France, I had brought all my belongings and why I knew would go with him, living with my Max is like living with a dormant volcano. Wherever you do stimulate it, you will have an eroding volcano of passion and Max is a passionate, caring and loving man. I am lucky to have met him and my sisters. We fight every night with him, in a sexual way sometimes loving, sometimes wild, sometimes passionate, sometimes mischievous. My sisters and I have planned with Grandma Perinelle to have her children. I'm sure Max will be a good father and an overprotective father. N forward slasher, this is the story of how Tatiana met our MC. Thanks for the support. Comment. 15 comments. Vote. Chapter 50, Chapter 50, The Vampire Hunter Worries and Coming to Transylvania Chapter 50, The Vampire Hunter Worries and Coming to Transylvania Alistair Aldalka's Point of View Hello, my name is Alistair Aldalka I am currently 58 years old, I am a dueling master and vampire hunter, I was born in Transylvania. I have a beautiful daughter who is currently the Minister of Magic of Transylvania and her name is Adela Dalka. I hope she will soon give me one or two grandchildren. After my defeat, with the old Elouterio in the World Duel Championship and with more determination I continued training, because I hope one day to be crowned World Champion. As a vampire hunter I have had a long career and I am very infamous in the vampire community. I am currently hearing news that vampires stole a shipment of herbs. The magical ministry of Transylvania is in chaos, because they robbed the most lethal man in the world and one thing, I hear from Maximilian is that he has no mercy with his enemies. I hope that Madman stays in his country and does not come to Transylvania, I swear I will kill the vampire who had the idea to steal Maximilian from him. Soon. The door of my office opens and it is my daughter Adelida, by her face my worst fears and thoughts come true. Maximilian Dovakian is in Transylvania and the father chaos has arrived. A forward slash n, oh yeah bitches, Maximilian is in the house, sorry, I correct, oh Maximilian went to Transylvania, what a novelty. He he he. Father, you must help us. Maximilian is coming to Transylvania in two hours and we don't know what to do, we hear from his manager that he is very angry because he lost more than 400 million g says my daughter Adelida. For that many galleons, I would also be angry and it is because money is not easy to earn, every galleon that I have earned is earned with hard work. How would I react if 400 million galleons were stolen from me? Obviously I would come in a rage to look for the thief and it would not be very nice to see, because it would be a massacre. What can I do for you, daughter? The man known as Maximilian, is not a merciful man and is very brutal with his enemies. Me being you, I give him permission to do what he came to do here in Transylvania. I say seriously to my daughter. 
but the members of the council want him to leave and it is because they want to solve this on their own says my daughter Adelida, she is innocent like her mother, I must open her eyes like his father and see the cruel world as it is. Dear daughter, sit down to tell yourself something I say to my daughter Adelida. Sure, father says my daughter Adelida. Daughter, you know why they call Maximilian, Max the Dragon Tyrant I tell my daughter. No father, I have only heard rumors says Adelida. Two years ago or so, Max the Tyrant Dragon was active and hunt criminal after criminal, he did not mind offending anyone. If he was a corrupt minister or a member of the corrupt council, it did not matter because he found the evidence of his corruption and released it to the public. Tell me daughter, how would you deal with such a man? I say with a smile to my adorable and beautiful daughter Adelida. Father, I don't know says Adelida, surprised. It is obvious, that some members of the council were bought by the vampires and now the vampires are scared because a man is approaching who does not come to talk I say to my daughter seriously. But father, what do I do and I have only been a minister for six months my worried daughter tells me. They gave her the position, because they wanted to have a way to communicate with me and to solve their shit for them. Now the shit they did is so big, that they can only call me through my daughter and it's because he doesn't have the face to look me in the eye. Whoever said that a father's worries end when his children grow up, was obviously a lucky guy or didn't know what he was talking about. With a sigh I tell my daughter daughter, when the champion arrives, I will help you receive him, but promise me that you will not go crazy forbidding him anything and only if you promise me that, I will help you. It's okay father, I promise, I will be cautious says my daughter. Soon we went to the Transylvania Magic Ministry, the place was already packed with several old scoundrels and already, it was giving me the creeps, watching so many hypocrites together in one place. Soon I felt the change of icy, cold, icy and erratic environment, Max the Tyrant Dragon had arrived. The fireplace started to flicker green and soon turned bright red, that was a strange phenomenon but it also felt like he was angry. You can see that my daughter was scared, as a good father that I am, I protected her with my magic and soon surrounded her with. I looked around and could see the council members, I was scared and petrified with fear. Soon from the flames a man appeared, dressed in a white Victorian suit, with extravagant gold trim and a black bearskin coat. One remarkable thing is that he carries a medieval sword with a golden dragon pummel and it was obvious that he wears light armor underneath his suit. I saw that he was looking at the place with his eyes, when my eyes and his met. I felt the illusion of a dragon's anger and as if an illusory force, which I couldn't help myself. For an instant or moment, I was able to dazzle the illusion of an immense dragon which devoured me in one bite and worked me, it was a very terrifying feeling. As I looked around, I saw some council members shitting themselves and if I hadn't been scared, I would have laughed at their misfortune. I know this was done on purpose by the champion and I know this illusion casts them with magic. Suddenly, I saw that the champion stretched out his hand to the fireplace, soon the fireplace flickered and appeared. A beautiful woman, hair color black, eye color brown and skin color pale, she was very beautiful. I had heard rumors that him champion had married, but I did not invite anyone to the ceremony and it was in private, another thing that was rumored is that he had a harem. Max's point of view. Hello friends, it is me, Max your favorite fictional protagonist and currently you thought that it would not appear in this chapter. Truth Well, dear readers, I, your server Max, have returned recharged and supercharged. I am the Matrix the Revolution. Ha ha ha. A forward slash n, my friend control yourself, you are embarrassing me in front of the readers. N forward slash mc. What do you want me to tell them, 
I'm happy to be back on stage and they understand me. It is obvious that they read my story, because I am his favorite fictional protagonist and all readers love me. A forward slash n, friend control your vanity or I will make you pass work, for several chapters. I am in control of your life, if I want you to be happy, you will be happy and if I want you to be miserable, you will be miserable. You understood. So shut up and focus on your role as the main character. N forward slash MC, okay, okay, author, you are the winner and I am the loser. A forward slash N, it's good that we're clear on that. Let's get on with the story. As you were saying, I am currently back and I have just arrived in Transylvania, as I always say, a good entry is worth a thousand words. With a bit of scenography and a bit of illusion magic here and there. Bam, members of the Transylvanian Magical Ministry scared and terrified of fear. I even saw one who urinated and defecated on his pants, it was a disgusting scene. I will cross that scene out of my mind, later with our clue Mency and I will put it in the part of my memory to never remember again. Soon showed up Bellatrix, with a smile on her face and it was obvious that she was very happy, because she would soon go crazy killing vampires. Suddenly. I watched Bellatrix's face twist or frown in a rather adorable way. I think it's because of the smell, the smell was all over the room and you can't blame me, for scaring these worthless old men. Holding Bellatrix's hand, I walked over to Alistair Aldalka and he's a good duelist, even though he lost miserably to Elalterio. Lord Alistair Aldalka, how are you doing and could you tell me who the Minister of Magic is? I say with a serious and angry tone of voice. Observe a woman of about 28 to 30 years behind Alistair, by its similarity in the hair and eyes of Alistair, I deduce that it is his daughter. Champion welcome, I know you must be very angry about the robbery issue and I ask for your understanding, I will work together with you to resolve the issue says Alistair trying not to get angry anymore. Alistair I have known you for four years. I have even fought once and for being you, me calm down a little, but I say in a serious and icy way, continuing my words, where I released my magic aura in the area if I do not hear answers for tomorrow at noon, I will take matters into my own hands and eradicate this vampiric plague, which dares to steal from me. I understand champion, do not worry I will give you a satisfactory answer. I understand I say. As I look around a corner, there was a well-dressed man in a black Victorian suit and as if he were a businessman, I had the feeling that I knew him from somewhere. I said Sebastian Lewis Shaw, the manager of my business in Transylvania. You are absolutely right, my Lord Dovakian and I am Sebastian Lewis Shaw, I have been working for your family for over eight years says Sebastian with a bow. Well. Guide me to Dovakian Castle I tell him seriously. Understood, my lord Dovakian says Sebastian with a bow. There was something about this Sebastian that did not fit me. Soon I boarded a carriage, with six Pegasus, and shot off towards Dovakian Castle. With a bit of concentration I closed one of my eyes and used my spell, along with my search spell. You can see a vampire woman surrounded by my herbs, apparently he was looking for something specific and couldn't find it. Decide to play and have fun making fun of the woman, I close my other eye, using telepathy. This idea, I took it from Professor X, and if he could do it, then why can't I have a magical version? Soon I connect with the mind of the woman, decides to play a joke and scare her so that he knows that he should not mess with my things. Woman, what are you looking for and why did you steal my things, it is better that you give me a clear explanation or if you do not prepare yourself because I will kill you I tell the woman directly in her mind. Whoever dares threaten Carmilla Sanguina says the woman named Carmilla, I think I have heard the name somewhere. You're not very smart, are you? 
I ask her with curiosity and a tone of voice to make fun of her. Do you dare to make fun of me? Says the woman looking for me in the place. A little further, no, 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 more to the left, yes there, no, no and a little more to the right I tell him, as I see that he is looking for me following my instructions and it was like seeing a cat, following a red light in the floor. It was pretty funny. Ha ha, you're very stupid, right? Ha 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 I say in a good mood. Stop making fun of me and appears, coward says the angry woman. Ha 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 ha, silly Carmilla, silly Carmilla, silly Carmilla and who can't find me, I'm just behind that door, yes that door I say to the vampire woman. Now I understand why Professor X always spent all day in the brain and it was quite obvious, that he spent his time making fun of people. The woman enters through the door and realizes that the room was empty, ha ha ha, this girl is confused and she still doesn't realize that I am speaking telepathically to her. Ha ha ha. To be continued in the next chapter. Chapter 51, Chapter 51, Sanguina Carmilla and Good News for the Dark Lord. Chapter 51, Sanguina Carmilla and Good News for the Dark Lord. Hello friends. It's me, Max, your favorite fictional protagonist and I'm currently here in Transylvania, finding clues as to who stole me and where the magical herb merchandise was. I found a vampire woman, who was wearing a beautiful red Victorian dress and she was checking the herbs, me as a good wizard that I am. With a touch of humor and fun, I played a little prank on her, ha ha ha, however. My prank turned into quite amusing entertainment for me and because the vampire woman was quite dumb, she didn't seem very smart. After having fun and insulting her here and there, I decided to have a serious talk with her. The woman was on the ground tired or pretended to be tired, because I don't think a vampire gets tired. I sure hoped that by pretending to be tired, I would go out and she might attack me typical vampire reasoning or intelligent magical beast. However, I had other plans and I told the woman in a serious tone. Woman, why don't you tell me why you stole my things and maybe I'll let you live, to make fun of you again another time I say with a smile on my face. You dare, I will kill you when I have the opportunity and I will bathe in your blood, I will drink every drop of your blood says Carmilla angrily and irritated. It was honestly fun to see the expressions on her face. Ha ha ha. You can try, but I will kill you immediately and you will not know how you died, I am currently a few thousand kilometers away I say with a smile on my face and giving him a clue. Lies. You are probably hiding somewhere and you think you can beat me, Carmilla Sanguina says Carmilla with a proud tone. I honestly thought you were an intelligent woman, but it seems that you have been drinking the blood of some troll and it affected you to a high degree of stupidity, since you are unable to reason or think I say with a smile on my face. He he he, but I made fun of her with my words. Sanguina Carmilla. I suddenly remembered, that in the chocolate frog cards and there was the story of Sanguina Carmilla, she was a crazy vampire woman that she is famous, why she bathes in the blood of her victims and she stupidly believed that blood was the way to eternal life or eternal youth. At the moment, that I was distracted in my thoughts, the Carmilla woman finally realized that I was not in the room and with surprise said something oh my Lilith. You are talking to me telepathically and how is it possible, no one has been able to do that from so far away. Ting ting, ting. Ting, ting. Your answer is correct and we have a her winner, how do you feel about answering correctly? I say in a mocking tone. Wizard stop making fun of me and tell me what you want says Carmilla with an irritated and angry tone of voice. Ha ha, who would think, that the great Carmilla Sanguina is a stupid and silly vampire, ha ha ha. Talk, what do you want? says Carmilla in an annoyed tone of voice. 
You shouldn't be so angry and I want you to answer me, because you stole my things I say in a serious tone of voice. These herbs are yours, Eam, ha ha ha, then I will burn these herbs, for making fun of me, ha ha ha. It seems that you are not intelligent, then I will tell you why I think, that you are a stupid woman and it is because you have not realized it. That I only focus on you, I will know where you are, what you do and where you are going. With all this information, I could send you thousands of bounty hunters who are dying to catch you and skin you alive her, now I doesn't think you're a stupid woman I tell her with a smile on my face. However, I feel a disturbance in my body and I realize that Bellatrix is being mischievous. I can only quickly end my conversation with the vampire woman and punish my naughty wife. The vampire woman hearing my words. For a moment I saw that she became paler and more restless. Yet she pulled herself together and asked. What do you want so that you shut up and leave me alone says Carmilla. Tell me what you were looking for and why did you attack my business. I tell him seriously. I'm looking for the blood gem, which they told me would be transported with your goods and I that's why attack his business says Carmilla. Who told you? I tell him seriously. I don't know its name, just that him wanted something that was transported with the herbs and it was something very special, because him didn't want to mention the name of the object says Carmilla. It seems that you are not being sincere Carmilla, we will have this talk later in person and it will not be pretty for you, because I will torture you in such a painful way that you wish you were dead I tell her in a ruthless and cold way. She knew more information, but she is not telling it to me, clearly, she does not know me and it is because I never got involved with vampires, to this day. But I swear, I will leave these vampires with a terrifying impression and awful demonstration, which will be so great I know that they will tell their descendants or their vampire clans for generations. Sometimes the best way for no one to mess with you is to slaughter a couple of people and it sounds cruel, but that's the stark truth of life. If you are dangerous, then your enemies think twice before messing with you and your things. That is the reality of the wizarding world and that is how the world works in general. The woman laughs out loud and says ha ha ha, then I'll be waiting for you, ha ha ha. Obviously. This woman vampire hadn't heard from me, but she would soon meet me and it won't be nice for her, now because of my experience as a bounty hunter. I feel like this will be a trap for me or someone is intentionally messing with me and I honestly just hope that the person is prepared for the event that is coming. Interrupting my connection with the vampire woman, to realize that, I was lying in the carriage seat and even I looked at my unbuttoned shirt. A Bellatrix was being naughty and doing wrong things, I honestly knew that, she was turned on, from the moment I showed her my superiority to the Transylvanian Ministry of Magic. I realize, that she is working on polishing Max Jr. and I was already excited, for all the stimulation that Bellatrix was giving me. I realized that it would take about 50 minutes to reach our destination and with a smile on my face. I put in the task of satisfying my wife's sexual needs. Fifty minutes later. A forward slash n, shit author you cut the good stuff again. Wait a minute, I'm the author, ha ha ha, what a good fifty minute cut, obviously. People don't want to read about sex and just want to read the plot. Ha ha ha. Arriving at Dovaki in Castle. I felt as if the author had taken a fun part from me and that I'm sure everyone wanted to read. But taking away the feeling I continue with my life and get out of the carriage, and look around me. A forward slash n, oh my dear friend Max, you must be imagining things and I, the author, I swear, that I have not taken anything from you. Everything is in your mind, he he he. Dovakian Castle is a Victorian Gothic castle, it turns out that one of my ancestors was a half-Gothic madman and believed himself to be a vampire, 
that's why him bought the property, decorating it with a typical atmosphere of a haunted castle. The entire castle was black, situated or located on a cliff at the top of a mountain and surrounded by a barrier of thick fog, which lasted all year. Even its location was kept hidden by the Fidelius enchantment and its surroundings are also very well hidden, surrounded by dangerous magical beasts. Besides it has illusory defense that can only be crossed by wizards and not by muggle, I can only say that my ancestor was very paranoid about security. I turn around, to observe my wife Bellatrix enchanted by the structure of the castle and honestly, I'm sure she wanted to tour it or explore the entire castle. When I see her excited, I say what do you think, my wife? This place is great. I love this castle Bellatrix tells me with emotion. Sebastian, I want a list of all the merchandise we lost and the names of the workers, who died in their noble labor of work. I understand, my lord Dovaki in saying that, Sebastian leaves in the carriage toward the company located in the populated area of Transylvania. Watching Sebastian leave. I can't help but notice that this Sebastian guy is out of place and it's like a strange feeling, the same thing happens to me, with Jack and Tatiana. I feel that something is changed in the world, but I don't know what it is and I am afraid that this situation will ruin my quiet life. However, I will confront him when the time comes and one more thing, since I arrived in Transylvania, I have noticed that they are watching me but I cannot locate who him is. Now I just hope to continue and resolve this conflict to go home to my wives and have a couple of children. What do you think of that man named Sebastian? I ask Bellatrix. I knew you would notice, my love and nothing can escape the sight of my man says Bellatrix in my ear and while hugging me from the back, what a naughty wife. It seems that I have to make time to examine and evaluate my employees I say in a serious way, as I walked towards the castle and carried Bellatrix on my back, sharing a special moment. Believe it or not, Bellatrix was the first woman I had sex with and my first kiss was taken by Tatiana, those five women have filled my life with sweetness and unforgettable moments. Upon entering the castle, I made my way to the first sofa that I could look at and soon began to satisfy my naughty wife's sexual desires. Voldemort's point of view. I was having a bad day today, because yesterday Albus Dumbledore killed many of my henchmen and I am losing the play, but soon more and more followers are joining my cause. Soon I could see my new follower, Lucius Malfoy and who was in love with me the strangest thing that has happened to me so far. But with a little legilimency here and there, I got a good following. I am currently awaiting news from old Lestrange who told me, that he would help me repress Albus in politics. I was also waiting for news of the businessman, I was finding out and he belongs to a sinister union, which has been operating in the shadows of the world for many years. The more I find out about him, I realize that Mr. Business must have a good position in the criminal syndicate and it is because he has a multi-million dollar company that operates worldwide. Back to the point, I observe Lucius approaching me, with a black card in his hand and that is Mr. Business's letter. My lord, I have received a letter from your ally Lucius tells me. I have not spread the word about Mr. Business much and it is because I know that he pays a lot of money so that people forget his name. I soon opened the letter and started reading the content. Greeting Dark Comrade, business is going well and I was able to raise a considerable amount for the cause. Currently I have excellent news that will surely brighten your day, it turns out. Albus Dumbledore was found drunk and unconscious in Hogwarts Castle, I am happy to tell you according to my spies. He'll wake up in ten days, you can even infiltrate the castle and pay him a visit, he he. I do not know how they him punished in the Wizengamo, 
which led Albus to drink so much and what, if I could find out, is that Albus was hit by the boxing willow on the way, which, by irony of life, Albus himself commanded to plant the boxing willow. The crime syndicate of darkness, is very happy with your progress and we hope that when you are ruled over Britain, you can join as a council member. Says goodbye to you, Mr. Business. Ha 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 With a great laugh, I laugh at this news and with this news, I can slaughter the most skilled members of the Order of the Phoenix. By the time old Albus wakes up, sadly he won't find any good henchmen and everything is getting better for me. Lucius discover everything that happened at Hogwarts today I tell Lucius with a smile on my face and I felt that I was getting better. That old Lestrange did a good job suppressing Albus. I'll give him a reward later and possibly give old man Lestrange another order. To be continued in the next chapter. Thanks for the support. If you see an error point me the text.